Hello my friends, welcome back to another Brood War cast. If you're watching this, you've just found my very first ever China versus Korea cast. I'm looking forward to doing a lot more of these in the future. We are in week 80. So this is a tournament that's been going on in China for a very long time. Little over a year. Uh, nearing two years now and it's not been really cast in English very much as far as I can tell I haven't really been able to find anybody else casting it it's on like Billy Billy and possibly Douyin aka Chinese TikTok but it's not got a English cast as far as I know and that's a real shame you know there's Plenty of great games going around. Now, there's so many different tournaments that are out there that just haven't been cast in English. I'm really, really glad to be bringing this to you guys today. We've got so many games to get into. I'm going to be taking it nice and easy throughout this cast because I don't want to ruin my voice. We're going to be going through a lot of games. Like I said, like 14 games, something like that. Uh, that's the maximum number that we could get today. So, yeah, we're going to slowly plug away at this series. We've got HBQ versus Kid. Kid being on the Chinese team, HBQ on the Korean team. We're not going to get, like, the absolute best uh, players out of Korea. It's mostly going to be B-teamers and uh, slightly lower rank players. Uh, strong Korean contenders, but not ASL strong for the most part, I think. Uh, because China is just not quite at that level yet. Uh, if we had someone like Snow come in, he could probably wipe the entire Chinese squad. That's that's kind of the way it is right now. Um, but China has been growing in power a lot. So they can definitely put up great games against B-teamers. And we have high hopes that they will be making to ASL in the very near future. Now, in this first game, we've got HBQ. He built a eight racks in the middle of the map. He's going to follow up with a factory. He's got the Marines coming in here towards the natural. He hasn't started a bunker just yet, but we've already got links on the way. No pull on these uh, drones, which is a little bit uh, contrary to what most people would expect. Hydroden. Wow, that's very interesting. Hydroden going to come out here. We've got four links in production. These ones are actually going to get maybe killed immediately. Oh, he's going to go after the SCV. Oh, the SCV. He almost got it. Didn't quite get the SCV. If he got that SCV, he might have actually held this uh, pretty easily with just the number of links he built. He's now going to go for a creep colony. Ah, he loses a ling there. Wait, one thing that you can do is shift the larva over to the left side of the hatch and then make it. I often forget to do this as well. Uh, in these pressure situations, but it'll just allow the lings to take less damage just after they pop out. So he should be able to break this since we did lift the barracks and switch things up into a, uh, what was it called? A uh, factory play after this. This is not going to kill uh, Kid, but the follow-up might. We've got the vulture coming across the map. There's only one sunk in here. We'll cover slightly this hole, but I think that you can run by, potentially, uh, the vulture. And, yeah, you might just die. I think he's going to... Oh, man. He's just going to go straight into Hydras and try to make a counterattack happen immediately. What do we have behind this? Factory, a bunker back at home. Vultures. No tank, though. I don't see a add-on. He's actually going to be going into Armory. So he's expecting something like, okay, we need to hide this Hydra. Yeah, do not send that out. This is, oh, he does send a Hydra out. Okay, that's unfortunate. He's losing uh, Larva here at the natural, which is very, very bad. We probably start a second bunk or barracks um, or bunker, excuse me. He definitely needs this machine shop. The machine shop starts. That's the most important thing in this game right now. HBQ just needs to get a tank. That is it. And he should be able to win this game. He's 10 workers ahead. He's got double the opponent's worker count, the Zerg player's worker count, and there's really nothing here that can break through a tank. 
There's the tank starts. Will he start the uh, siege mode upgrade here in a moment? He should. But he's still trying to produce Marines and SCVs. I think you just cut SCVs here, personally. Just don't build anything but bunkers and tanks and Marines, and you should live. But he hasn't started his uh, upgrade yet. The Lynx are going to get in here. They're going to jump on top of the bunker. Trying to get a good surround on that. He's actually blocking a lot of the SCVs off of this bunker. And he might actually get it. It's going to be close. He does get it. The bunker goes down. That's very big. We've only got three, two now. Hy uh, hydras. So two Hydras is not going to break through this. And Kid taps out. After trying this desperate counterattack, he's not able to make it work. He sees the tank. He knows that his time has run out. And Kid taps out. HPQ going to take the first game of the series. Let's jump into game number two. So in our first game of the series, we had a very quick rush. That eight racks. Still powerful even in today, uh, July 2024. But... Uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about uh, the actual format of this tournament yet. So let me just sprinkle that into my commentary at the beginning of some of these games. Let you guys know what this tournament is all about. It's kind of, from what I can tell, based upon the Pro League format that's going on. Uh, the daily Pro Leagues for uh, Korean players. So how it's going to work is in the first series, I believe it's best of seven. That's right. Best of seven 1v1s. And the, f the team that takes four sets wins, uh, which makes sense since it's a best of seven. And they're all set up uh, beforehand, I believe. So the matchups are predetermined. Um, from what I can tell. But then once that first series is done, that first set of seven is done, we're going to go into a second set of seven, which is a King of the Hill format. So the player who wins stays. And that is pretty much how the Pro League works in today's day and age. Uh, and then, of course, we'll go into an eights match if... You know, the, the first series is won by the Chinese or the Koreans, and then uh, vice versa for the second. Uh, then it will be 1-1, one, one, and we'll go into an ace match, which we can discuss a little bit later uh, if that does occur. So we're getting into this game with a gas deal here from our Protoss player. Let me just check his name to make sure I don't mess it up. His name is AP. He is the Chinese representative here down in the bottom right. And we've got JW4040, who is our Terran Korean player. He's going to be throwing down an engineering bay. Unfortunately for him, a zealot pops out. AP will be able to deal with that engineering bay nice and quickly. This is actually not going to delay him at all. It's going to delay his zealot walking across the map, but that is it. Um, because he's not ready to actually take that uh, Nexus just yet. This is not a very good delay uh, from JW. Uh, maybe we'll call him 4040. JW, he's a Jehovah Witness. He's going to come over here and tell me about his god. I don't think so. We'll call him 4040. And this guy is AP. So we got AP and 4040. Sorry, I'm just trying to remember the names. A lot of new names in this tournament that I've never seen before. A lot of Chinese players. Because uh, we, we really don't know too many Chinese players just yet that are in like the North American or the English zeitgeist. Most of the players that we know are like Zhan Hoon, um, Mi Hu. Uh, who else is big? Shuan Shuan, I think I've heard of him before as well. That's another one that will be in the lineup uh, for this week. But, you know, there's so many other great players that are out there that just haven't had uh, quite as much success as those that haven't maybe made the transition over to Korea to try and uh, make a go at the ASL for various reasons. 
We've got a run by here with three zealots making its way into the main. It was heavily damaged by the four marines that were in the bunker. And the SCV blocking was very good. You can see that uh, JW or 4040 was all over this. Now getting right on top of these marines is actually going to kill quite a few. He kills two. Trades out for two zealots. He's also forced a lot of SCVs off the line. It was a really great move by JW to bring his SCVs out here and try to block. It didn't work out perfectly, but he clears that with relative ease and he's managed to, you know, secure his gas with a very reasonably timed command center. Uh, and the transfer comes through, you can see, even on the overall worker count. And right now, Korea is at a small lead because HBQ got that first kill. I'm gonna have to make some sort of like banner or something at the beginning of this so that you guys can tell uh, where we're at in each series but like i said i'll sprinkle in more information about how the format works uh, as this series continues and as we have more downtime that type of thing we've got double gateway no robo on the side of ap so likely he's going to throw down, oh, a third gateway. But this SCV is going to get right in here and spot everything. That is kind of big right now. He sees triple gate. I think he uh, realizes that this is going to be a pretty quick expansion. Not the fastest expansion. He sees the robo as well. Uh, that's definitely going to be for only observers. We're unlikely to see any reavers made out of this, at least for the... Uh, next few minutes he's going to be pumping straight dragoon constant dragoon production and trying to take more bases around the map while just defending purely with that dragoon now i don't know if this is totally uh, the best way to play for ap uh since this was scouted the terran player is going to be able to skimp really heavily on turrets like he doesn't need to build any turrets if he realizes what's actually coming here he is going to build almost zero turrets and likely not going to build even you know any other detection you can see armory he doesn't have literally anything to detect no turret no armory no scans no mines he's just going straight into siege tech and getting his three factories up so he is really optimizing his build well uh, for what's coming and this is the type of advantage that you can get from sneaking an SCV around the outside of the map. Siege up here. Gonna pull, push back these uh, dragoons. Oh, could he get a second shot there? Dealing some hull damage to that dragoon. A little bit painful for AP. And AP just gonna take the base. He's kind of playing into the hands, though, of JW right now. We are adding on some turrets. So he's gonna put one... Here at the corner he's gonna put one in the natural as well okay he does put one there i thought he might put one here just in case there was like some sort of fake out into a dt but that's not going to be the case just pure units coming out here we do have a couple of vultures on the field i need to get uh, a pylon wall over here just to make sure that those don't sneak in will he build it with the last probe he really should because, I mean, these two vultures could absolutely rip. They could absolutely rip this apart. He's going to send a probe over here now. Build that pylon wall. But that was a little bit risky. You know, these vultures, they headed over here. They could have absolutely headed down here first. And that would have been a lot of lost probes. As it stands, AP not going to lose anything. He's going to be able to defend here, no problem. Going right into Charon boosters. Now that I'm pretty surprised about. I don't know why we're going into Charon boosters right now. He is going to get the academy, although it is quite a bit later. He wants to make sure that there's not some, you know, change up in the tech. That he's not going to be aware of and suddenly DTs are fighting his army. Going up into seven factory. All right. So this is a fully dedicated push. Seven factory follow-up here from JW. He's just going to try and win. A as soon as possible. And one, two, three, four, five, six. We've only got six gateways. Seven factories versus six gateways is not a... 
winnable scenario, I think. Another gateway going up over here. Two more, in fact. But still, we're only kind of on par with the Terran player if we have this many gateways. We're not actually ahead. And we need a bit of a lead if we want to take on a Terran head-to-head -head with just pure gateway army. We need like four, three, four more gateways than he has factories. And all his factories are done. While we're just adding on our gateways back at home. Let's see how the first engagement goes. Because that could be really indicative of how this uh, fight will play out. Gonna push this back just a little bit. Slowly creeping forward. He's gonna come across the catwalk. That's for sure. One good move could be AP sending his dragoons over to here. And then as the army pushes across the catwalk, come in to this position and just block uh, any reinforcing units. Dragons can do an excellent job of that. He's got one shuttle. Just with a few zealots inside. Gateways are finishing up and not producing just yet. Some of them aren't. Some of them are. We have a pretty good amount of income coming in for AP. But he needs to spend it. He is doing a pretty decent job of spending that. He's not going to have Storm. He's not going to have really anything of substance aside from his full gateway army. Whoa, this are getting really stuck. That's a little bit unfortunate for JW or AK4040. He is gonna lose one tank, but it's okay. Continuing to push forward here. He is on seven factory. He's only got one add-on. He might actually do well to add on, put a second add-on. It's typical that Terran players will only have one add-on per gas geyser but when you're only going plus one you only went for plus one you're not going into any like further upgrades it's definitely possible as you can see with the amount of gas that's left over to make that work to actually have a fine number oh my goodness two two fights going on at the same time Trying to counterattack in. Six DTs on the way right now. What? He's going to build six DTs? That is crazy. He wants to just burn the scans, I think. He feels like if I just force you to spend all your scans uh, by sending in the DTs one at a time, maybe I can break this. He's still got his uh, army over here, but he didn't place it where I thought he would, which is right there on that high ground to, pr to prevent more reinforcements from coming. Now the probes are going to be pulled up here into the main. Here comes the DTs. Let's see what he can do with these. The drag of mine into the middle of this army, it looks like. Ooh, first scan comes out. That one mine, unfortunately, just getting stuck underneath the Goliath. Wasn't able to do anything. Coming in for the counterattack right now. Diving on top of this. Maybe the DT goes unscouted. There's the scan. Second scan comes out. What are we at for energy? just about ready for two more scans but he's breaking into the natural dealing a bit of damage oh here comes a zealot counter coming from behind this army they're gonna get right on top of this the siege up is a uh, kind of a weird timing looks like it will work out pretty well here for jw sorry 40 40 and actually 40 40 gonna leave this position what is he doing he's gonna head down to the bottom left i feel like he needs to hold this contain the contain is everything right now. Why are we heading down to this bottom left? Uh, uh, AP is going to get a free pass to get out of his base right now. He's going to be able to get out on the map. And okay, he wasn't able to make another pile on there. He only made one. So eventually this will be broken. And the vultures will get in. Surprised he didn't send his probes up here. Because that would actually be rather safe. Uh, instead... He's going to let the probes die, and Dragoons are just going to go straight across the map for a counterattack. This is a dire situation for a Protoss player. He is going to try and clear out some of these mines before bringing in a shuttle to attempt to break this base. He lost his Observer. Secondary Observer will be coming forward. One Dragoon sent in to tank some damage. Here comes that shuttle. Dropping Zealots on top of the Goliaths and tanks. Drawing in mines. Beautiful mine connection there. He might just barely be able to break this. But at the same time, this base in the bottom left is dead and tanks are on their way home. GG. AP toss. AP taps out.
and 4040 takes this game who was that for that was a win once again for the korean lineup so it is now two to zero for the korean side as we jump into game number three okay the next match we've got here is going to be john hoon versus prime for the china versus korea tournament the ckw is what it's called or the acronym for this tournament um also known as the san pao star league big shout out to san pao and the sponsor starcraft forever for hosting this event really awesome to see it china getting involved in this beautiful beautiful game so many uh, great video game players so many great professional uh gamers in china it's awesome to see them throwing in uh to this beautiful game and, and giving koreans a run for their money as well because it it's uh pretty tough for basically any but any other region to put up great games against koreans uh, at the current date like only a few players can actually do it there are very very few international players who can put up uh, a good fight against the korean lineup and here we've got as i said juan hoon who is one of the more well-known Protoss players is going to be opening with a Nexus first against his opponent Prime who I am not totally aware of I've definitely seen his name kicked around a few times uh, at different tournaments and um, on seawall.gg strong as many of the players are here uh, for the Korean squad strong ladder players but uh, infrequently visiting things like the ASL or other big tournaments, especially in-person tournaments. A lot of these guys are not well known at those, but that's fine. As the Chinese squad continues to grow as the week uh, weeks continue on, I'm sure we'll get more and more great Korean players uh, to uh, join this tournament and give these guys a run for their money. I mean, if China wins too many weeks in a row they're definitely going to start to bring out stronger and stronger opponents for them we've got a probe trying to make its way in here john hoon gets the scout finally he scouted cross map first and then down here to the bottom left he's not really going to be able to see much but behind this nothing really crazy out of prime he's just grabbing his factory and going for a vulture expand interesting place to position this factory i would think that this wouldn't be a good spot to place it because usually you want to put a tank right there like later on into the game right here is a prime location to cover all this area he cancels his bunker that's interesting so realizing that there's not going to be a lot of pressure out of john hoon better not to build that bunker and get this cc down a little bit faster um cannon out here at the front it's a reasonable build we're seeing out of john and a lot of players are going for things like this we've seen recently out of flash ways to counter it flash bringing out a pretty awesome tank remedic build where he's going up and just bringing a siege tank immediately and building a bunker and just bunker pushing into your natural uh, it's not going to be the case here from Prime. He's got his own CC down. He's just going to play from a bit of a deficit, unfortunately. Seven workers behind Juanhun. And that's just unfortunate. That's the way she goes. We've got double gateway coming up. No robo just yet. Is he going to go for the third CC? I've seen this a lot before from Sharp. This is a really cool way to play. Triple CC. There it is. Starport done as well. I'm not so sure about the Starport at the moment. That seems a little bit funny to me. All right. We're going to get a mine connection. 
Mines are going to hold back Juanhun for now. This is the actual plan, right? He's expecting something to come out of the Terran. He's expecting some sort of aggression. Maybe a Vulture into the main, you know, with a drop. You know, maybe something crazy is going to come out of him. Maybe he's just going to not build the CC and go for like two factory players. There's all kinds of crazy stuff can happen. Um, but he just doesn't have Observer yet. Still no Robo either. So you can't really move out. And that's what Prime is counting on. He's like, you're you're gone for CC first. I know that you're not going to have that early Observer. So let me just defend with Mines and build this third CC. And by the time you finally are able to move out, I'm going to be on three base where you're still sitting there on two base. We've got a Wraith here. Mines connect. He's actually going to start to come out, sacrificing some units just to... Oh, God. Another great mine connection. That is so painful. Did he just stop making vultures? Because I feel like we have a lack of mines. He could just die here, guys. And it would be one of the most tragic, kind of ridiculous deaths you could imagine. We've got five goons. This is just pure ape play from Juanhun. He's just going to walk straight through all the mines and actually just kill our Terran player prime. Yeah, he's just going to go up this ramp. Nothing really that Prime can do. He's targeting his tanks onto the Dragoons, but... All right, the miss shot's pretty, pretty strong. He's just going to leave. He could head up north and start to kill a bunch of SCVs up here as well, if he knows about that. It looks like he doesn't know about that yet. There's the Robo finally coming out. It's kind of hilarious. What the... What is going on? What are these probes doing? That's wild. Kind of hilarious, the, the eight play that's been showcased here. Just really walking straight through the mines and across the map. Turned out to be the right choice. <laughs> we got some damage. And Terran is on 39 workers. Uh, if he'd been able to snipe a tank or two, he actually would have gotten on top of the production and probably just won the game. But now, finally, we are going to get some production going. Uh, we're going to have an Observer out in just a moment, so he can start to clear and take a third. A double expansion wouldn't be out of the question right now for our Protoss player. It's really unfortunate he didn't find out about, out about this. If he came in here, saw the lack of units, and actually understood that there must be a base up here, he could have probably forced us to lift, maybe killed a few extra SCVs. He probably would have lost his Dragoons, but would have been a fine trade. Uh, considering he's got a lot more production back at home to just rebuild those units now can't be walking into mines anymore like there's a limit <laughs> you can't walk into mines the entire game and just expect to win um everything gonna be pushed back that's fine we've got a wraith in here i don't know what that's doing kind of funny but that goes down it's a little bit of a scout going but not too much information gleaned by that and of course, a third Nexus will come down. I wouldn't be surprised to see him just send the probe up to the top right and just take another Nexus. Because he has so much money right now. He's got 64 probes. Just a, a few more seconds and he's going to be up to 70, which is all you could ever want. That's like almost too many probes at that point. And once he saturates four bases he's gonna have an insane income just crazy crazy amount of income now this vulture could get in and actually slow things down it's actually it's gonna prevent that second nexus from going down right away at least these dragons are gonna come around the side and see that there is indeed a third base but for the most part you know prime has gotten away with this he has gotten away with this getting such an early third base as a terran is a huge bonus it is massive. You can afford everything. You can afford all your upgrades. You can afford to get a ton of factories out really, really quickly. And you'd just be monstrous in the late game. Absolutely monstrous. Observer going down over the Terran natural. He kind of sees what's going on. He sees the third. He knows he's at a bit of a deficit. 
is going to send a probe up to top right. Try to snag that base. We need a few more cannons over here, though. Uh, to make sure that this is safe. That's, um... That's not going to slow down three vultures very much. If three vultures get in here, you can kill just about the whole probe line. 73 workers. That is so many workers. Arb Arbiter Tribunal on the way. Let me switching it into Arbiter Play. After this opener. But Prime's got 61 workers. It's perfect for three base. Actually going to add on a few more. Going up to nearly 70 himself. Uh, before stopping that worker production. Dragoon's going to come in. Just snipe one tank. That was a pretty good move by John Hoon. Trading one dragon for one tank. Really reasonable for him. And the vultures are going to be pushed back as well. John Hoon double expansion in the top right. Wants to get those online and operational as quickly as possible. As he adds more gateways here to the main. His Arbiter is getting close to popping out. And he will be going for Stasis Field first. Try to slow down this Terran player as he comes across the map. And try to take a good trade with his mostly gateway army. Now he's going to pull the trigger on an attack before Prime is fully out of his base. Using the concave that he set up here just outside of this natural. To deal as much damage and pick off as many tanks as he can. Now he's already killed about four tanks. He gets another couple. And we'll have to be okay with that. Backing off now. He's got a 40 supply advantage. But he's got to be careful about this next engagement. Here we go. He's going to dive in once again. Fully unseaged right now. Prime is coming forward. The dragon's going to snipe another tank. The vultures go down. The zealots disappear. And I think we're just going to have to siege up. Whoa, this next this next rally is actually so big. John Hoon doing a fantastic job of rallying forward here. And you can see Prime is starting to fall off a little bit. He's not building his vultures as quickly. He's got a lot of money to work with. Could actually go uh, used to go up to a few more factories. He's getting right in here, killing so many tanks. Look at this. John Hoon doing a fantastic job. You can just see how... Being a little bit quicker with your macro can give you a massive advantage in this game. John Hoon was able to bring an entire round of Zealots to the front line right as that army was needed. And Prime just not able to get the Vultures up, up there to deal with it in time means that he is in a pretty rough spot now. He is starting to move out once again, but his tank count has been completely reset. Let's take a look at the upgrades. Plus one is done. Plus two is on the way. A couple of vultures making their way down here to the bottom right are going to be a nuisance. Filling off a few probes, but still with 70 probes. John, who's going to be feeling fine. He's got, you know, good saturation at each base. At least 12 probes at each base. Except for here in the natural, which is fine. Probably want to transfer a few probes out of here as well. You just want like one probe per patch when the patches are getting so low. Don't want to mine them out too quickly. A lot else is going on on the map right now. We're getting into recall. Huge waves of zealots are coming out. Whoa, that was a little bit funny. Running in the dragoons there. Then eating that mine. Not the way that you want to do it. But do we have EMP yet? EMP just now starts. Karen booster as well. It's prepared for the possibility we could see a carrier transition. We don't have any upgrades coming yet. Usually if you're planning a carrier transition in the future, as a Protoss player, you'll want to start the upgrades at least, just so that you have them on the way. You know, maybe have plus one attack. Uh, later you can add on plus two. And then as you're transitioning the carrier, you've already got those upgrades kind of rolling. And it's just a lot scarier to deal with. Wow, a lot of vultures making their way up here to the top right. Just going to fight the three cannons over in this uh, quadrant. They're actually going to kill all three. The probes will transfer, but there's only one cannon on the high ground. So a lot more damage can still be done here. Running up through mines. John Hoon not taking the greatest of trades. Oh, recall over here at the center left. Looks like John Hoon's broken in. This is the perfect recall, honestly. Right as Prime is moving out and he's starting to establish a position here in the middle. You recall his uh, 
expansion. And then as long as you keep recalling over here and killing off the, the SCVs, it's going to slow down Terran by a lot. Now, not all the probes were killed up here in the top right. He manages to hold on and add on a bunch more cannons. Well, he should be adding more than this, actually, but... That's just beside the point. Another probe heading over here to the top left-hand corner. More mines just being kind of walked into here by Juan Hoon. A little bit sloppy. But he's doing a good job in the theoretical aspect of this game, right? He's doing the correct moves. That should be able to bring him into a good position to win this game. Like taking other quadrants of the map. Starting to build out gateways in them. Continuing to macro strongly, recalling onto outlying bases of the Terran that are not as well defended. These are all great moves. Oh, the MP, nice dodge there. And he kills the science vessel. Absolutely fantastic. Now, can he get the stips? Oh, the stasis on the ramp is not perfect. I thought he was going to get a little bit of a better stasis there, but still vultures can run up. A lot of SCVs taking a lot of damage. She's drawing in more mines, trying to get these kills on these SCVs. A lot of them have been picked off. There's still 67 workers on the field for Prime. Prime coming up this ramp. Gonna drop another tank up here, but it does get picked off immediately. More vultures are necessary. He's even pulling back some of his frontline tanks to this uh, back base, trying to save the third. And he actually needs to save the third now. He needs to keep this alive because these bases in the main and natural are mining out. In fact, the main just mined out right now. So that is a bit rough. How many kills on this? Five kills on this Dragoon. John Hoon is slowly taking complete control of this game. Finally, having enough defenses over at this base. But John Hoon is going to make a move over towards the uh, once was once strong uh, main or middle of the map area sort of between the fourth base and the natural no longer looking as strong okay we got the cc down over here as well looks like it was uh, dealt some damage by the few dragoons that were left down here but those eventually got picked off and now with 61 workers still remaining prime is in an okay spot it's not great Especially with this base going up. You don't want to allow that to happen. But he is still alive and kicking. He's got his plus three on the way. His plus two is done. His plus two armor is just about to finish. His upgrades are going strong. And he's got enough income, I think. To continue this game out. Uh, into a very long late game. Now, this could be problematic. Another recall over here to the third. I mean, John Hoon playing this out beautifully. He knows exactly what to do with the, these recalls. Where it's going to uh, hurt the Terran player the most. And he kills the CC as well. That's very frustrating. Now, Vultures are going to make their way up to the top left. Looks like they'll actually defeat these cannons and maybe kill this base. But at the same time, can he hold... Can Prime hold his bottom center? It's really his only mining base once this mines out. Just very close to doing... Trying to come up on this high ground. A lot of tanks down here. But John Hing taking pretty good engagements. Pretty good trades with this army. Another scan goes down. He's still trying to clear this. More of John Hoon's army is coming up. And an Arbiter is coming in to assist. Likely it will be looking to throw down another uh, stasis on this ramp. While he continues to assault this position. Diving on top of the tanks. Forcing out more and more um, scans here. Science Vessel helping out with that problem. But the Zealots are just way too many. Oh my goodness. The detection problem is no longer a factor, but the Zealot problem is in full effect. Prime leaves the game just getting kind of overwhelmed and outplayed by John Hoon, who didn't have the greatest opener, right? He went for the Nexus first, which is awesome. But he allowed Prime to get away with this extremely fast third base. Which generally puts Protoss in a pretty rough spot. But the recall play was fantastic. He just kept recalling the outlying bases. As you should. 
and Prime was never really able to push. That's kind of wild. He pushed down to six o'clock in order to get his fourth, but he never even threatened these bases. Uh, aside from some small vulture runbys, he was never able to put together a full army to actually contest Hoon out on the map, which is uh, pretty much a bop. I guess that would be the definition of a bop, right? In Protoss versus Terran where the Terran can never even never even gets a chance to push. It's not quite like a Snow versus Barracks bop with the Reaver just ripping you apart in the early game, but this is still kind of a bop. John Hoon putting up a great game here and taking the first win for the Chinese squad. All right, hopping into our next game. We got Xuan Xuan versus HJS. Xuan Xuan, of course, representing the Chinese side, HJS. For the Koreans, it's... uh. Been ticking along here pretty good so far. No super long games as of yet. Just uh, lots of aggression in the early games. And yeah, hopefully we'll get through this today. Uh, if not, I'll probably break this into two different episodes. I like to keep my videos less than three hours long for the most part. Could go much longer than that with how long the series is. Like I said, it's almost a pro league. Can get very, very long. But just so many good games to watch and up and coming players to check out. Chuan Chuan, definitely one of those up and comers. Is not quite as well known as like Mihu, John Hoon, or any of those guys. Uh, Xiao Shuai, those people, but you know, he's uh, making a name for himself slowly but surely. Takes a long time to get recognized in StarCraft Brood War. It's got such an amazing history, an illustrious history of m so many different players. You can't just show up and, and do pretty well uh, right off the bat. Uh, it takes a long time to get situated and to understand the strategy. And not only in Brood War do you have to understand strategy uh, as it currently stands, uh, the, the current meta. Uh, but you also have to understand the strategy from history too. Because at any time a player could pull out an older build. And you kind of have to know like what, what are they actually going for. What are the strengths and weaknesses of those older builds. Like if you're just like a completely new player. And you've become really really good at playing absolute standard in today's 2024 meta. One of these older guys is going to bring something out that hasn't been sh uh, shown for like 10 years and you'll be completely thrown off and probably end up losing that game. So he's trying to get some vision of the CC. Looks like he just barely wasn't able to see that. I'm pretty sure he couldn't see the edge of that, but I'm not 100% sure. SCV here. Going up into the main. Shuan Shuan getting full information on what's going on with this Zerg player. I love the Magenta decision for the Zerg. Magenta Zerg is one of the best Zergs. I, I like Red Zerg as well. Um, orange, of course, you gotta get those uh, Goku Trunks colors. Uh, the, what's it called? The Gi. The Orange Gi. Love to see it. Like the SCV is going to get back into this main base once again. It's kind of important to try and block this. Oh, he actually pops out a couple more links and does manage to block that. You don't want to allow that to get up into your main again. Especially if you made this number of links. We don't have anything over the natural. Or even anywhere near the natural. So a naked marine move out is possible. But it's actually not going to be that. Sean Sean went for the one Rex FE directly into plus one. Which is a very standard strong way to play right now. Not as standard as just normal two racks pressure, but it's a good way to set yourself up for a strong mid game. We've got Spire on the way. It's a 2.5 hatchery build out of HJS. So playing completely standard on either side. Nothing out of the ordinary here. With the number of links he's got at the front, he's going to be able to see... You know, when these medics start to pop out, how many marines are there. He should know that this is not a pressure build. 
This is not a two racks pressure. And we'll send a drone out to the bottom right. Probably going to take the natural. If he's playing completely, like I said, uh, in the meta, he's going to take this base right here. But interestingly, actually going to go ahead and take the main. Hmm. Yeah, it's not as popular right now, but there it is. He takes the main base. The reason I think that it's not quite as popular to take this base anymore is because uh, getting down this ramp is pretty hard in the mid game when the Terran player has control and Zerg players have gotten very strong at holding these naturals. Maybe Sean or maybe HJS thinking like um, it might be better to go with the hatcher and high ground against the plus one upgrade because you are going to have such a strong move out timing. It might be worth it to be able to defend from high ground at this base. That's a possibility. We're just about done plus one and range. So right as those two upgrades finish, there will be a big move out timing here for Xuan Xuan. But at the same time, HJS having a lot of opportunity to drone. And he's gotten a ton of mutas out as well. It was able to produce a whole bunch of those right as the Aspire was finishing. Now we're going to transfer some drones down here to the bottom right. And let's see what he can do with these mutas. There's a pretty decent commitment to turrets from Xuan Xuan. Get in here and you see this. Might be a good idea to just immediately swap into Lurker Play. And look at that. Hydralis Den is just about to complete. So he was definitely on top of this knowing that it was a good idea to begin this transition as soon as possible has not spotted uh Sean Sean has not spotted the hydro den just yet looker upgrade already on the way here third gas is coming up i would be feeling pretty good right now if i was uh, our zerg player despite not actually doing anything with these mutas he's only made five very low commitment into the muta play He's going to be sending a few more across the map to bring this up to a total of eight. But he doesn't really need to do damage. This is almost a little bit wasteful, having plus one on the way. But it might be necessary once the Marine Medic starts to move out to actually fight this army. However, we are so close to Lurker and he hasn't even moved out of the natural. Seven minute 30. Chuan Chuan going to start to hit the field, but... He already has his transition on the way. His double starport play is coming now. Some sunken colonies getting started in the natural. But lurkers are going to start momentarily. These marines should not be able to take out any of these bases. See the lings getting picked off here. Just need to get right in that one little spot there. Make sure that the uh, marines can't break up that ramp. Three lurkers on the way. He's actually making them at the top of the ramp, which is uh, a slight mistake, I would say. If this Marine Medic ball comes straight down towards that bottom right, they could run up this ramp. Of course, you do have the ability to delay with these mutas, but it's just a, a little bit of an extra risk, I would say, that maybe isn't necessary. If you're, if you're just good at building it right on that corner right there, then it cuts off the ability for the Marines to do anything in that base. But now that the Lurkers are none, the same thing is true. There's really nothing to do for these Marine Medics in the bottom right. Couple Sunkins here, couple of Lurkers as well. Hive is on the way, along with an Evolution Chamber. Not going to be able to break up this ramp. And HGS looking fantastic. Xuan Xuan's going to have a bit of a hard time in this game, I feel. Coming through, picking off a few Marines here and there not being any like not even a slight overcommitment here from H J S it's a bit of a weird name but he is not taking any unnecessary risks he is just building up his mutilus count a little bit more to bring it back to that 11 and having the right number of lurkers everywhere to defend now three lurkers is almost breakable it's like it's close Especially with plus one armor, we might actually see Xuan Xuan pull the trigger and try to win right here. That is a distinct possibility. With that one armor, it takes three lurker hits to kill 
a marine so it just makes it so much harder to kill this bio force he's not gonna pull the trigger there right as the plus one finish i thought he might go in but he decides to pull back gonna maybe set up a third base potentially a fourth as well muta swinging around towards this main what kind of damage can he do here we definitely have uh some irradiates which could easily start to pick that off start to shut down these mutas so he's gonna lose two mutas to the turrets but now he's gonna kill a bunch of scvs a lot of scvs going down right now and we will be able to pull and the irradiates come down as well one irradiate two irradiates down on this group not the greatest pull out here from hjs but he will survive for now 41 workers to 46 evening out that count just a little bit Nidus Canal finally coming up. That's quite a late Nidus. I thought he would have that a lot sooner. We've already almost got Defilers out. And the Nidus is not connected yet, so... A little bit slow on that. He's luckily not going to get punished for that. We've got three Lurkers here. He's going to stack them up now. More Stims coming through. Is he going to try and break this? I'm walking into uh, the Sunken Line right now. It's a little bit rough. These Marines over on the right hand side, center right. I'm gonna try and pick off some transferring forces. Irradiates going down as well in the main. Oh, I just heard a vessel fall as well. Extra hatcheries being added on, but no fourth base just yet. HJS, he needs to get that defiler out so that he can start to try and take that fourth. Third base already up and operational here for Schwan Schwan. He's loading up some dropships back at home. Where will he go? This base is looking quite secure, but this space right here, if he flies through, he could actually get a lot of damage. Just dropping back here would be massive. He's actually heading over here towards the center right. Maybe try to go for this angle, but there's already overlords over here. Let's take a look at the main. A little bit of space you could try to fly in this direction but most of this is covered where are the dropships going to go now he's putting some scans out there little feelers on the map checking to see what he can see a few radiates go down on some defilers and lurkers I actually kill some of his own drones no drones do end up staying alive where are these dropships going to go we've got three dropships on the map SCV heading over to the center left looks like he'll be taking a base there soon he's gonna try and dive into the natural it seems like that's the way he wants to go gonna go right in on top of these lurkers it's kind of wild like one vessel gonna go down maybe another another vessel does fall marines land on top of all of this this is a crazy play from schwan schwan landing here and just killing off this base he's not really able to unburrow these lurkers because more forces could come running in but he loses the natural immediately. Lurkers under Darkstorm over here. Darkstorm coming down. As he continues to push forward. Can he get another Darkstorm out? It's really close. He just barely gets it in time. That was a very important Darkstorm. They managed to get out there at the end. It's like more Ling's gonna come down here. Clear out these Marines and the Marines will all be cleared. But this is a significant loss of mining time for hjs he's gonna try and snipe this can he get it oh it's so close he gets it he gets the kill again oh that's brutal that is a brutal snipe for schwan schwan just getting rid of that again so annoying another drop coming in as well Ooh, good job with the uh snipe there on one of these drop ships before it could unload wings popping through there's a couple more marines in this drop ship and we're gonna go for the eraser trick as well so many drones in this main base because the natural was killed he's getting a ton of kills on these drones more scourge gonna pop out he should be able to shut this down finally we'll make everything back up for now the space gonna come down once again hjs is completely on the back foot right now he's been slowed down mightily and there's very little chance that the Zerg can get out on the map to harass Schwan Schwan, who is 
uh, accelerating in this game with a fourth base coming online. He's got so many barracks now. He's even going to be transitioning into battle cruiser here pretty soon. He should be getting a third starport in a moment as well. He still has dropships around the map that he can utilize. He's still got quite a few vessels, although some of them have been picked. Coming out for the plague. Can he get a good plague here? Three vessels do get plagued. Reasonable trade there for HGS. Another vessel goes down. More vessels are going to fall. Well, this is a great trade for HGS now. Another vessel goes down. That is huge. I believe he just got four vessels there. So these are things that could bring HGS back into this game. It's still a tough battle for our Korean Zerg, but there are possibilities. There are moments of weakness here and there that could be exploited. Another plague goes down. Gets another couple of vessels. Would be a, maybe a good idea to set up a spore here at the front, but... Oh my god. Sean Sean gonna pull the trigger on this. There's four lurkers, but that is so many marines. He's gonna bust right through. Not going for the Dark Swarm. Really biting HJS in the butt. He's trying to run down this ramp, but he just can't. He cannot get down here in time, and he's gonna lose that fourth. And this is just about GG. There's almost nothing that you can do at this point as the Zerg player. He will come down here and try to retake this base, it looks like. Wow, what a plague on all these Marines. That is a nasty plague. He could get another one, too. Dark Storm comes down. Lurkers will burrow. How many of these Marines are going to end up going down? A lot. A lot of these Marines are going to end up falling. But another Radiate down on this Defiler. Looks like he can finally start to retake that fourth base, but the natural has just barely come online. So I guess he's back on three gas once again, but for how long? Oh, Muta's coming out here, trying to kill that dropship. Looks like they're not going to get it. He almost got it with the Scourge, but Scourge didn't come in clutch there. How are the upgrades looking? Plus two armor already done? That's reasonable. That is a very reasonable armor count. Can he actually get another plague off here? Dark Storm does go down. Quick consume, maybe? No, a lot of lings are going to die to this uh, irradiate. Whole bunch of lings end up going down. Bunch of marines over here at the top side. He's just making sure he can cover all the bases. Has vision over everything Shuan Shuan does now. He's just closing out this game slowly but surely. As the fourth gas tries to come up, the main base is running out of gas. That is mining out very quickly. Firebat in here is going to get a lot of kills. You can see he's just wrecking these lings and drones as they try to funnel out of this base. These last few remaining marines will likely be going down. Just pure ling overwhelming them. Plus three armor is about to finish. It's just seconds away. He's buying that time, but battle cruisers are starting to hit the field now. Got battle cruisers making their way over and no real defenses over here oh can he get a vessel there we go one vessel goes down another vessel goes down beautifully done one lurker here though ultra is finally coming out no defiler present to stop this this is going to be a serious uphill battle for hjs but he's finally got his four gas online just moments before his main base gas runs out though will it be enough nice snipe on that defiler the one in the back that had the most energy. He picks that off. And another Defiler coming up here. He's going to immediately snipe that as well. Beautifully done here by Xuan Xuan. Taking advantage of the Zerg in a brilliant manner. Marines are going to start to run by here. Just kind of <laughs> sacrificing themselves really. Uh, to get into a position where the ultras, ultras will be forced to engage. And they absolutely have to take the fight here. Not really any choice in the matter. These Marines are crushing it in the back. Probably going to be able to take out this hatchery. The moment that the Dark Swarm runs out, the plus five armor Ultralis will be picked off. And Spore Colonies are just not going to cut it. Because the Battle Cruisers are reigning supreme here over this fight. More Lings come out. He sends some Lings over to the top left-hand corner. It looks like Shuan Shuan was taking multiple bases. Some Ultras make their way over here to the center left. Trying to get a counterattack going. But he just can't stabilize. He can't get this base in bottom right uh, saturated. Whereas Xuan Xuan, he still has mineral income at multiple locations. So he is 
likely going to take out this game. I mean, he's a full 100 supply ahead at this point, so definitely he's going to take that one down. HJS taps out, and another win going here for the uh, the Chinese squad. Kareem's going down, and what are we, tied up now? 2-2? Two to two? That's awesome. We're going to be going forward with a tied up uh, series here. Best of seven, so whoever gets the next two wins will take away this first series. Let's jump into our next game. Okay, China, that's what we like to see. We've got a rematch here with Chuan Hun versus Prime. So we've already seen all of the players that are gonna be coming out today. Uh, the matchups were set up ahead of time. And I guess we're doing like a roulette wheel to figure out who or which matchup is replayed. And they rolled the wheel, they randomly decided which matchup, and it happened to be Juan Hoon versus uh, Prime. So we're gonna get that rematch now. We've got a gateway here. And then we might be throwing down a barracks on low ground. Nope, high ground barracks. Can set up a pretty nice little wall here on retro. Put that supply depot on the right hand side. It won't really block you too much from your units coming out. Like you've got all your factories here. They can pretty easily slide out. Sometimes if you uh, end up putting a supply depot near your ramp, it can um, make it hard for you to macro out of your main base, but I think this shouldn't be too bad. Now, again with the cross map, I think John Hoon did this in, in the, the other game as well. It's quite a long series, so I've been taking some breaks, having some uh, snacks and drinking lots of water, I'm trying to keep myself hydrated and the uh, vocal cords uh, firing because We've been casting more and more on this channel, <laughs> more and more all the time. And especially with these new series that we've got, uh, shout out to our Chinese partners. Um, that's probably just going to grow. And that means I need to really take care of my vocal cords and do my best to prevent myself from losing my voice. First, Zealot is making its way over here. And a bunker is going down in the front. Looks like the uh, uh, SCV block should be good. He's going to try to run by. No, he does not. Really serious about not letting this run by is Prime. Remember that Prime lost that game earlier against Sean Hoon, but now he's getting into a pretty early command center. So this is actually gasless fast expand. The gas is on the way now. And the Nexus is going to be thrown down immediately here for Juan Hoon. He hasn't really spent his gas. So he pulled one uh, probe off of that gas just to get the Nexus out a little bit faster. But now he's going to get back on the gas. Two Zealots going to run by now. Uh, kind of getting caught on each other there a little bit. And another Marine pops out as well. So he's going to pop out three of these Marines. Oh, he's actually got... He had three Marines and one SCV in the bunker. That's a little bit funny. I'm not sure how that happened, but that's a bit of a mistake. Unfortunately, the uh, Zealot's really getting on top of these Marines. The turnaround was pretty good there. Can he target down? Oh, wow. He lost just one Marine. Pretty good range on that Zealot attack. But it will be pushed back now. And we should have a goon out any moment. Goon just about to pop. You can see we've delayed range. And with the number of Marines that have been built, I would actually be a little bit worried about uh, a counterattack coming, but I guess it's probably not going to happen. Double factory follow up. Yeah, I guess it can't really happen. It's just whenever there's no range on the Dragoon, it makes it so much easier to bust. Makes it so much easier to break through what the Protoss player is doing. They just have way more uh, defensive capability when range is done. Two Dragoons out now and range is on the way. Not until after the robotics facility started though. And we should see an observatory, potentially a second gateway as well. Let's see what he decides to do here. Uh, I'm not seeing it. Nothing at all. Okay, a uh, uh, shuttle on the way. So actually it might be, yeah. 
Uh, robotic support bay. He wants to go right into a reaver and try to get some damage done. You can see it even on the worker count. We will have a reaver out here really, really soon. Not much anti-air at the moment. Engineering bay is on the way. Prime doesn't have a very good idea about the follow-up might be, so he's got to prepare for all eventualities. He has a decent little lead here because of the speed of his command center. But that doesn't mean that he can get complacent. It just means that he has extra money to throw down extra defenses to cover all the options. So he can put down a turret here just for DTs. Get another turret back here. Um, and then set up maybe two to three turrets in the main to really cover all the options. Ooh, is he going to lose his tank? Oh, the tank goes down. Traded out for just one Dragoon. That's really rough. Prime making a big mistake there by moving out. Not expecting Juan Hoon to get really aggressive with those two goons. Now pushing out with Marines and uh, two tanks. Let's see if John Hu can hold this. I think he should be absolutely fine. Yeah, with the Reaver, I believe this gets shut down super easy. Like, this should get absolutely crushed. He's only got one turret in the natural. Oh, the, oh, oh, my God. That was nasty. Very nice first Scarab there, killing all the Marines. And now it's just a couple of tanks running home. With two Dragoons in pursuit, he's probably going to lose the tank. Yeah, I should take one more shot with this Reaver. Oof, and it did so much damage to that second tank. We could see Dronhoon just bust right now. There's nothing in the bunker. It's all going to be dropped on top of that uh, mine. And once the mine is removed, now the Reaver can just go to work. Oh, is he going to pick up? Oh, he picks up as well. And he saves this goon from the mine. Be able to drop, take one more shot. Looks like he's just going to go after SCVs. Doesn't get as much as I thought he might. There is a turret under there too. I don't think he noticed. All right, he does notice that now. Another Dragoon shows up. This Reaver with 13 kills. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Judge, nice job. Very good pickup there. This is like some almost snow level control with the Reaver. He's done so much damage with this. And he's doing a great job of dodging another great hit there. Juan Hoon completely in control of this game. He's going to continue to send Dragoons across the map because the bunker is just useless right now. It's got nothing inside of it. And there's hardly anything here for Prime to defend. He's got almost nothing to defend. He has to kill stop the Reaver. As long as the Reaver's alive, though, it's going to continue to re remain a threat. And these tanks are never going to be able to... Uh, come forward to deal with this Dragoon threat. He's going to drop on top of the tank. One more shot. Okay, he does get rid of that. Very important that the Reaver was taken down, but these Dragoons are dealing so much damage. 30 SCVs to 53. I think that really tells the story. This worker count is brutal. Prime is so far behind. He's 40 supply in the deficit. And this is what that quick reaver can give you as a Protoss player. The follow-up was so swift and it completely punished the push out from Prime. Now Prime did behind this snag a third CC. I don't even know where this came from, but I guess he's got a third CC now. Kind of insane. In both games, he was taking very quick uh, third CCs. Uh, I don't know if this one's going to be able to stand. It looks like it might barely hang on. He needs actually more tanks down here. Looks like he's going to maneuver them over in just a moment. Tanks are hitting from the north. Going to run forward and snipe one. Comes up to snipe a second. Two tanks have gone down. Pretty good trade for about three Dragoons. And the trades are just going to get worse from here. Like, this is already bad enough. Prime needs the most insane good trades you've ever seen to make himself come back in this game. And he just can't get it because 
Uh, Juwantun is avoiding the masses of tanks and just picking off at the periphery every single time. There's still a pretty big hole. I guess it's kind of been filled by these turrets here. But again, diving in with a Reaver now. Gonna go to work on some SCVs. Good target there. Flying in towards the main now. We've got two turrets here, but this one's not gonna be in range. Can drop way on in the back now. Could go for these supply depots. I think that would probably be uh, a good pickoff, but instead going for SCVs, that's fine. I think he might have dodged that, but it was really, really close. Possible that that uh, damage actually went through. Yeah, he can drop back here, start to hit the supply depots. No, still not going for that. Instead, just going to try to hit this SCV. Unfortunately, bugging out that scarab. And the tank will grab that kill. So Prime kind of stabilizing a little bit now. But it's still a very rough position. He doesn't have a starport. He does not have plus two on the way. He's just adding on some factories right now. But it's still looking a little bit dire. So he might lose this turret. Yeah, he does end up losing that turret. Or lo losing that shuttle, excuse me, to the turret. A fourth base coming up now for Juan Hoon, but he's actually already maxed out on uh, probes. You never really want more than 70 probes, and he's just going to walk around taking more bases. Look at this. Total casual moves here from Juan Hoon. Just go down, build a base, build some cannons, send the same probe down, build another base, build some more cannons. No real effort necessary here. Just keep on macroing and get ready uh, for the time when Prime is finally able to push, which is going to be minutes from now. Like I would say around five minutes, maybe around 17 minutes, something like that. We might see him push out. He's at 98 supply. He's not even cresting that 100 supply count, which is about the place where Terrans usually tap out. Like once they go below 100 supply, Oftentimes, you're just out of the game as the Terran player. If you can maintain just over 100 supply and you're, you know, fighting with the Protoss and they're sticking around, you know, 150, 60, you can still kind of hang in there. And if you're at 160 and the opponent is, like, maxed out, that's still a pretty even game. But if you're below 100 supply and your Protoss opponent isn't, like, about to die, then you are in a really bad spot. And... Prime is in a very bad spot. It's not unthinkable. It's not, uh, you know, impossible to imagine him making a comeback in this game. But it is really hard to imagine how he could bring this back. He's actually going to just completely forego um, additional upgrades, it looks like. He is getting the starport now. So maybe thinking about going into that eventually. But I don't know. It might be even better to just go... To just build up into uh, a big supply and then just go across the map and try to kill. Like these high Templars are going to get picked off. Not a whole lot of kills on these. Just three SCVs end up going down in the end. Some vultures out on the map. Dealing a little bit of harassment. Let's see what kind of kills they've got. Um, zero on this one. One on this one. Two on this one. So maybe catching a few probes out in the middle, potentially. Going to run down into... This base here, possibly get a lot of kills. Yeah, that's a pretty decent amount of harassment. All right, these are some good moves for Prime. Prime is making a, a real go of this now. He's almost reached that 160 supply to hold the 200. He's got a science facility on the way. So the moment that this plus one armor is done, I don't even know where that is. I think it's up here in this corner. I just can't see it. I don't remember how to remove this, but the armory as soon as it's done we should be able to see plus one start or plus two start excuse me plus two attack once the plus one armor is done he's starting to push forward a few zealots just going to be sent in sacrificially just to get rid of those advancing tanks and pretty good trades once again for juan hoon just picking off a good number of units while staying completely maxed he should be adding on more gateways down here and there they are lot of gateways in the main base and coming in once again here's a big storm attack 
A lot of zealots running up on top of these units, getting some beautiful storms. Uh, zealots get annihilated by these mines. But again, great storms here. Just pushing back the tanks, killing off a good number of them, and remaxing very quickly. 138 supply. We are not quite at the position we want to be if we're going to take a full fight against the 200 uh, Protoss army. Going to go ahead and grab the command center here at 12. Prime's objective is clear. He wants to take this area of the map, control this base, and then slowly push across and contain the natural. I believe that is going to be the course of action here from Prime. Moving down and cutting this map in half, if we could just zoom out for a moment. If you want to cut the map in half this way, it's so much area to cover. It's kind of crazy. Here's the first storm. Great pickoff there from Prime. Second pickoff is good, but he loses one storm on this uh, group of frontal tanks, and that deals a lot of damage. Uh, still pretty good pickoff so far from Prime when it comes to these uh, Templar coming in and harassing him. Now he needs some anti-air over here. Otherwise, drops will come through and just ruin all of these SCVs. He also needs to push forward a little bit further. Try to get some mines along this axis, maybe along here as well, until he's ready to push into this direction. This is going to be the optimal uh, area for Juanhu to hit. Great snipe on one of those shuttles. The second shuttle is not going to be targeted, so all of the Templar will get out, and they will get some great storms on the back line of tanks. Very nice job by Juanhun, but Prime is hanging in there. He's spreading out tanks once again. Sieging up in range of these goons. Great pullback there from Juanhun. This base is up and mining now, and there's still a hope and a prayer for our Terran player. If he can just hold out long enough to get his double upgrades going, to get to 3-3, Maybe he can bring this one back, although it's going to be a tough battle. And it'll be mostly a tough battle for this bottom left, which is great. He's already got a vulture down here. It looks like he denied a probe. Trying to take that base, which is fantastic for Prime. Just very important that he does not allow this Protoss player to take up the other quadrant of the map in the bottom left. Here comes a Reaver drop over at 12 o'clock. Going to make some big connections? No. Completely denied there. Some more shots going off. Just pure Vulture coming to clear this. And that's, uh, that's a little bit scary. Trying to clear that with pure Vulture is a little bit tough. Now, SCVs coming back here could get wiped off the face of this earth. There's so many SCVs here. Are, are these reverse shots going to connect? I guess it's not going to be able to. It's like they both dud out and that reaver is going to go down. So that's a bit rough. Not getting nearly as much damage as he was hoping for. He's actually even on worker count at this point. But Templar are about to change everything. Templar drops and making their way over here towards the main. Is he going to go for this base or will he come over here? There are mines uh, ready for this. Oh my god. How did that Templar not die to the uh, mine connection there? That's crazy to me. Almost all the SUVs get wiped out. And you can see he just dropped from what 60 supply to 45 or 60 workers to 45 that's pretty brutal that is so many workers that just got killed off uh nearly 20 workers just died uh for prime so he is gonna be feeling a little bit weak right now at 153 supply he definitely has the army count to fight uh with john Hoon, but can he really remax it's gonna be tough here comes a big group of zealots. We've got some drops coming through as well. There's a good D matrix there in the front. Templar gets sniped immediately and aren't able to cast their spells. So Prime is doing a great job. There's another storm or another Templar and a storm comes out. So actually able to push through here. 140 supply pushing against 185. You've got to be careful here as Prime. You've been barely hanging on for it. Uh, crazy amount of time just holding all out against the hope of coming back in this game if you botch this attack uh, the game is will just end uh, no two ways about it he has to do this attack uh, basically perfect 
if he wants to win this game. And this is not the perfection that we were hoping for. Zealots coming in from all sides. Juan, who making a great counterattack happen, is actually getting in here and killing a huge amount of the tanks. You can see the supply just plummeting down to 100. Still 163 supply on the side of Juan Hoon. How many add-ons do we have? We've only got three, uh, which could definitely be bumped up to four if we take this gas. And as you can see, a lot of money in the bank right now for Juan Hoon. He's going to be able to max out way too quickly. Look, we're already maxed. And our Terran opponent is only at 128 supply. Another drop likely going to be targeted at this base. Because there's really not any... <laughs> there's not any SCVs anywhere else. They're going to come in once again. Here we go. Zealot's going to be dropped on top of the SCVs. A lot of the SCVs get killed. Not by Storms or Zealots, but by the tanks themselves. Targeting down these Zealots. Uh, end up killing a lot of the SCVs. So... Again, down to 142. Nothing mining over here for the moment. Almost all the SCVs were killed off. Big round of SCVs going to head up towards that 12 o'clock. Uh, army moving in right now. I don't see many vultures with this fighting force. There's an EMP going down. It's a very good spell. More storms on the SCVs and tanks in this mineral line. He will eventually push this out. And tanks are holding strong. But he actually needs to create a no-go zone here for shuttles. We need more Goliaths in this area. Two is, is great, but it seems to just not be quite enough. It's so hard to defend against these constant storm drops from the Protoss. He's just been whittle, whittling down the economy and the army for so long that we actually might reach a mine-out point. Uh, here as the Terran player before we're ready to push out. Only 126 supply. If we can't cross that 160 mark, then yeah, we might just be knocked right out of this game. Storm's going to come down here on the front. Very nice D-Matrix to keep that tank alive. Unfortunate about the SCV, but it is what it is. Coming around the side here once again, looking for more kills on the 12 o'clock position. Can he actually still get in here and deal any damage? The first step to Prime winning this game would be shutting down an attack like this. He does a great job shutting that down. And now he might actually get to 160. It's still going to be hard, but he may be able to get there. Prime down here at the bottom left, picking off probes, stopping bases from coming up. It's beautiful stuff. As long as he keeps the uh, Protoss out of the bottom left, I still have a hope for him here in this game. That is a lot of tanks now. So, so many tanks, and they should be 3-3. Th three, three. Not quite yet. Just three, a plus three upgrade on the way now. It's a little bit later on. Coming in for another drop here in the center left. Let's see what type of damage this can do. Storm on the SCVs. Killing off a few of them. Oh, the follow-up storm there was brutal. That was a great storm. Six kills on that. Two kills on that. Absolutely fantastic for Juan Hoon. Dealing all of that extra damage at such a critical moment. We're down to 43 workers once again. And he's seeing that there's not really many tanks over here. Maybe he wants to try and break through this position. While Prime is busy elsewhere. He's actually pushing over here towards the natural. Getting closer and closer. But taking it so slow. The Juan Hoon's going to have an opportunity to counterattack. Here we go. Breaking through the supply depots right now. He does need to get a repair going on that supply depot. If he doesn't want to let these zealots through, there's the storms coming down on the groups of tanks and vultures. Very annoying stuff. Another couple storms rain down on these SCVs on the left-hand side. Just so much value out of these units. Ooh, shuttle. I think that might have been rallied out. Going straight to its death. Another storm. And another storm as well. Oh my goodness. It's so annoying. Another storm. This guy just has infinite storms. 10 kill High Templar here. Just ravaging this base. Looks like he will eventually. What is he targeting? Is he targeting that? No, he's not. 
Um, that could be intentional or not. We've got another D matrix here on a two HP tank. That's actually not very helpful because any amount of damage will actually kill that. Um, the D matrix protects the health, but it still allows a small amount of damage through. So if you're at that low of HP, it's actually not helping you at all. Something important to note for your Terran players out there. Do not throw down D matrix on like a one HP tank because small amounts of splash and stuff will get through and uh, the tank will just explode even if the D matrix is fresh. We've got just a few more units coming out here. Oh my God, look at all these red HP tanks. Uh, I don't think Prime realizes it, but he just ate so much damage from the mine. He actually needs SCVs to repair this so badly right now. These tanks are incredibly low, but he's gonna build turrets and he's gonna try and take out this base. I don't think that Juan Hoon's even worried about this, honestly. Like, eh, whatever. Go ahead. Try to kill the base over in that right. Um, okay. I'm gonna lose some probes. Yeah, whatever. 65 probes still in the bank here for Juan Hoon. Those two tanks that were very low end up getting picked off immediately. Two more shuttles come out. They must be on a bad rally. They're just gonna get picked off as well. Tanks are pushing up here into the natural. But Prime is running out of money. He's at 120 supply. And Juanhun just has so many other places to rally units out of now. He's even setting up bottom left finally. This Nexus goes down, but it's after. After the minerals are all gone. So he's completely mined his third base. Uh, before Prime could get in here and actually deal with that uh, Nexus. So building up Storms and Zealots on high ground. Few dragoons mixed in there as well. It's just fantastic. Uh, eventually, you're gonna want to try and break up into the main, or you're gonna want to change tactics here as Prime. And no matter what happens, if you try to break up there, uh, the the Templar and Zealots uh, dragoons are just going to rip you apart as you try to break up the hill. Oh my gosh! No, so many tanks and vultures go down here to the storms. It's so rough. I think Prime's about to tap out, actually. He's changing his tactics. He's just going to go to a different location. Maybe try to come over here. Split the map in half. Try to take this space, I guess. But I think it's a little bit too little too late. Zealots are going to come out here. Throwing down storms on the tanks and SCV is repairing them. He does set up a few more tanks, so he should be able to push this back. But Juan is just giving him so much trouble. And he's already picked off the CC uh, at the center left. Prime is going to leave this game. Another victory for China, guys. China is leading the way right now in this series. 3-2. to two, Really impressive game here out of Juan Hoon. In both of the games he played against Prime, it felt like his position was not fantastic. Like, both times, it really did feel like the early build order victory went to prime but each time Juan Hoon just playing it out nice and calmly getting into his big macro game and overwhelming prime uh, in that way so nice to see Juan Hoon play he's a real contender on to our next one guys let's see what the roulette wheel brings for this next game okay we've got a rematch between AP and 4040 4040 down here in the bottom left. AP in the top right. AP was not able to take down 4040 on Blitz Y. Can he do it on Citadel? A much more Terran favored map. I imagine the answer is going to be no, but let's see what he can do here cross map. Maybe he can get a Nexus first out and make it really difficult for 4040 to push. 4040 here handling his business on Blitz Y played a very strong Terran game pushed very aggressively and uh, ended the game early which is what I like to see Terran players trying to do in the modern meta it's very hard to go super late game and contend with the Protoss player with all of their shuttles and storms everywhere 
we saw in that last game it's just it's really tough to play against Protoss when they have most of the map uh, even though you've got you know max upgrades it just doesn't help you against storms and there's always the possibility of the Protoss player switching into carrier as well you have to keep on scouting and figuring out what they're doing it's much better I feel uh, in this modern meta to put the pressure on Protoss and try to uh, do a timing attack that can end them before they really get off the ground on this map it is highly effective we can take a look at the overall uh, geography of this map likely we'll see our protest player take this space right here as the third right and that opens up a, a play that we've seen out of a lot of Terran players on this map recently we come out of our base we go along this edge and we move directly into this position here siege up all along this wall and along this wall here and it makes it almost impossible for the Protoss player to come through and break this position the tanks down here are going to be hitting everything as it moves forward and you have to go around this wall it makes pathing really really weak for the Protoss player if our Terran gets into a position like this it's going to make things wildly difficult for Protoss to come back from we've already got the factory here we've got our Nexus out I believe wow this is looking like it was a uh, Nexus first as well and we've got two gate after sorry guys wasn't fully paying attention thinking about the geography of this map I believe this was Nexus first you guys should have seen it in the production tab and the uh, on the mini map but we're getting into some Dragoon production now. And it's looking like an overall AP victory in the early game. And I, let me remind you, China is one game away from taking this round. They just need that one last win. If AP can do it for them here. They're going to start this series with a victory. SCV finally going to be picked off here in the main. Now we are we are starting mines. And we could see 4040 lay mines out on the map and try to take a third base immediately. That is a possibility. We saw it before from Prime. It didn't work out perfectly. Because Zhuan Hun was so aggressive just running through the mines with his Dragoons. Um, it made it a bit hard for him to hold on. But there is a possibility of 4040 trying the same tactic. And it working out a little bit better for him. He's already behind these units with his Vultures. And he's going to be looking to throw down mines here. You can see the robotics facility is just now on the way. Which gives a lot of leeway for these mines to hold the center of the of the uh, map. While 4040 looks to grab that next expansion. He's not going for it, it seems. He has plus one weapons on the way. Oh. Plus one attack on the way. Vehicle attack. Coming up here for 4040. And no third base to speak of. Was not able to get the mines in time to contain his opponent with the two gateways pumping seems like AP will be unleashed on this map and it's just looking good it's looking very good for AP he's not as far ahead in workers as I thought he should be maybe cutting a few probes to get some extra units out to try and put on that pressure but He's still looking pretty darn good. He's got his uh, tech on the way. His observers will be coming out here soon. Spreading out dragoons for uh, potential drops that could be coming through. I don't see any of those just yet, but that's definitely a possibility. We've got an NG bay here. Some more factories coming down as well. 
Just killing the egg. That's where the sound uh, on the map is coming from. But I feel I feel pretty good about AP's position. It's not the greatest, like I said, but he got away with the Nexus first, and he didn't allow forty forty to take a quick third, which is excellent. Now. Can he get out here and grab a fourth or a third base? Excuse me. It's like it'll be this mineral only most likely that gets taken next. I'm going to start to set up some pylons. Mines are going to be set for 4040 to check these bases. Make sure that they're not being taken without his knowledge. And a third gateway pumping away. Everything looking Pretty good for Protoss, although this is definitely playable for Terran. 100% can absolutely play this out. And 4040 is going to slow walk his way into a upgrade mech style. You can see he's got science facility on the way already. And AP is being a little bit slow with how he's taking these spaces. He's not being quite as aggressive as uh, I would have thought. And that could come and bite him in the butt. He's got the third base on the way. But as soon as you get in here and you see the science facility in three fact, I think that taking multiple additional bases uh, could be a good move to kind of counter what's coming out of the Terran player here. They're going to be slow. Their attack timing is very much behind what you might regularly see. He's only got a few factories to work with. So push across the map at this point, highly unlikely. Taking another base would not be a bad idea at all right now. Coming in, gonna try to snipe a few probes. Looks like three or four gonna go down here. And that's actually gonna give 4040 a worker lead, although it doesn't matter as much since he's just on two bases right now. He's not gonna be mining that much more minerals. He might even be mining less because we've got these extra patches for our Protoss. Reaver in the front. SCV down here at 6 o'clock. It appears that 4040 is ready to take his third base. It's a little bit risky on so many or so few factories. But he is adding them on as he goes. And AP is not ready to fully bowl over this Terran player on three bases. And he's just trying to poke him right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was weird. Did you guys see that scarab? Scarab was tripping. Like road tripping. Heading all across the map. And the Reaver going to be dropped here once again. Can he actually get the kill on this? That would be insane. Looks like he can't. It's just in range. Oh, oh, oh. Take a shot. Nope. You should be able to land here. Can you take another shot at the SCV? Looks like not. There's the probe at 12, finally. They're looking to take the third, but it's a little... Or fourth, but it's a little late. The fourth base is going to come out at around 11 minutes. About the same time, it, like the, the CC is finishing here at 11 minutes. Which is not looking great for our Protoss player. We have a transfer of SCVs here shortly. Tanks in the pocket here. Really, really good. It's much nicer if you have them a little bit back. Have them like right along here. It's so hard to get dragoons to walk up to this wall and fire over. If they're just pulled back a little tiny bit. One wraith out here. Super annoying for the Protoss. Does go down immediately though. Arbiters are on the way. 
plus two just finished up for the Terran. So there is kind of a late game tech coming from uh, AP. But the late game upgrades are gonna uh, go online very quickly in this game. The late game upgrades from Terran are steam rolling ahead. And it'll be very easy for Terran also to take this base. So he'll be up on four bases before you know it. At, at which time he'll be nearing 200 supply as well. That's a lot of factories. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine factories already. We'll be going to 10 factories really soon after taking this fourth base, I imagine. Scanning around the map. Let's see what he sees. Just checking for more bases right now. He doesn't know about this force right out in front of his natural. Could be caught a little bit off guard if the attack comes in and these tanks are not sieged. That could be a little bit rough. You can see the tanks sieging up right as the zealots get on top of them. Making for a pretty decent trade. Oh my god, that is such a sick reaver shot. Holy, that reaver got so much damage right there. And the Zealots are actually going to trade out with the tanks relatively well. But the Dragoons get splattered. So many Dragoons end up going down there. And you can see 4040 is actually at a supply advantage now. The deficit here for AP. Absolutely massive. That is crazy. Like 30, no, 20 supply deficit for AP. He's feeling the hurt right now of taking a fight against a plus two plus one Terran mech army. Plus one plus one is done for these Protoss units. But we will have spells online in a moment. Recall is coming. Stasis is already done. We're driving up towards that Remax quickly here for AP. He does need quite a lot more units. But he's got 10 zealots being produced at a time. 10 gateways going here. He does not have, however, a second rally point to work with. He's just barely set up this top left-hand corner. Does not have any gateways over here. All of them are in this main. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 gateways to 10 factories is never a good sign. Or was it nine factories? No, he added on a 10th. Now pushing over here towards the bottom center once again. Gonna run right past these stasis vultures and look towards breaking through this area. Nice mind drag there. Killing off quite a few vultures. Probe's gonna transfer to the top left while this uh, army is threatening the flank. Of 4040's army. 4040 looking to push forward now at 199 supply. Has a really strong army to move forward with. Plus three. Just about done right now. And 4040 going to take the center. This is a big move from him. A big move for our Terran. The entire army going to go on counterattack though. Trying to break through this position. He's getting the zealots very close to the army before. They were actually detected, utilizing well the Arbiter uh, abilities here. Will he be able to get good spells though? At the same time, huge counterattack coming right now from 44. He's just going right on top of the rally point for AP. AP is going to potentially kill the command center, but then he'll have to back up. The command center floats and disappears and runs away, excuse me. Whereas the Nexus goes down. So all overall, I'm feeling this trade right now for... Oh my god, all these probes making their way down to the bottom right are going to get cleared by Singular Vulture. Coming back home now. He has a bunch of stasis. Two stasis are available. But is he going to lose all of his next side before he gets up here to deal with this? He's coming around the left-hand side. But the Nexus is going down. Two Nexus are going down right now. Dude, 4040 just killed three bases in the time it took for 
his opponent AP to kill one base and then run back home. Now he didn't even get the base kill. That thing is still alive. Some pretty decent storms going down there. But with these tanks tucked into that little corner, it's difficult. Oh my gosh, did you guys see that mine connection? Holy, actually insane. Mines clearing out everything. All those zealots end up going down. Looks like we've got another base over here. Dude, 44 is running away with this game. We've got almost nothing left here for the Protoss. Dragoons and Archons are gonna be able to clear the mostly Vulture army now. But at what cost? He's lost so much and the reinforcements are coming. Looks like he does kill some of the vessels. But tank reinforcements have arrived. He's pulled everything away from the defense, moving everything into position to try and finish this game right here, right now. There are no defenses over at the 12 o'clock. This could be absolutely wiped out at any moment. And you can see that AP has nothing in his mind uh, regarding like a counter attack. He's not going across the map and trying to harass either of these bases. Uh, even though he really needs to because there's nothing on the defense right now. Dropping off Zealots on top of these tanks. He's trying to break this position, but the target fire is amazing. 4040 just has way too much, and AP has to tap out. Tying up the score 3-3 three to three in the first round of Week 80 of the China-Korea series. This is getting exciting. I love to see a close series, guys. Let's find out who's going to take home the first points here. It's all going to come down to this in the roulette wheel to figure out who will play for that last game. All right, guys. Our roulette wheel has spoken. HBQ is here in the top left versus kid in the bottom right hbq we watched him wreck kid in game number one that was with an eight racks though so not really getting a true taste of the skill available to kid we've seen hbq a few times before uh, even featured him on the channel in one of my past videos against Bisu. He put up a pretty fantastic game. So his skill is... It, it's, it's not in contest. This guy is a skilled Terran player, that's for sure. Incontestable? Is that what I'm, the word I'm looking for? Anyway. Kid here is the one looking to prove himself. Can he c come back and actually take down HBQ, get his revenge, and give his team the first point in this series? So we're looking for now. We've got Kid chasing this SCV down. He sent out the early drone to make sure that he wasn't being cheesed. But we could see a eBay here blocking this expansion. Having a hard time getting the flick shot, but that was a good one. Oh, very good moves from HBQ. Just a couple more hits. We'll win this. Oh, it's so close. He does get it. Really nice flick shot there from Kid. Has the spawning pool on the way. But that first win, that first kill, got to be swelling his confidence right now. His hatchery will begin. His gas going to start here in a moment. This is a pretty tight build from kid he's gonna have a really quick gas not a lot of minerals to work with will un it'll be unlikely that we see a 2.5 hatch here maybe some sort of two hatch play uh with a strong mutilisk timing on the side of hbq we have a cc getting started now with just a single rax uh, to back that up try and keep that alive two lings pop out gonna go ahead and chase down this scv now wants to get rid of that as soon as possible 
We'll be getting that three minute layer. Waiting for 303, there it is. I can't remember exactly the timing on this, but there's a little trick that probably most of you guys don't know, especially if you've never played Zerg. This was explained to me by Shun, is that uh, if you hit, I believe it's exactly 303 or 304 with your lair, you build it at that perfect timing. It's right as your larva popped out. So when your lair finishes, another larva will pop. So you actually get an extra larva from making the uh, lair at that exact time. Now, I might, might not have uh, perfectly articulated that, but you understand the idea making the layer at 303 or 304 anyway gets you an extra larva and it seems like kid is optimizing for that making sure that he gets the absolute maximum number of larva possible here it's not as big of a deal if you're going for a third hatchery if you are going for a 2.5 hatchery style of play but when you're really cutting corners and trying to get the absolute tightest build possible on a two hatch muta play having that one larva could be the difference maker it could actually be the difference maker having one extra muta at a specific time or you know having the extra larva to make an extra overlord when you really need it so you can continue your production um could be the difference between winning and losing in a game like this now we are going to be sending out a drone down here to bottom left going to start a third base over here but that doesn't mean it's not going to be an a mutilus all in it could still be that play it's just he is committing quite a bit more into economy now adding on more drones getting into this base looks like a marine went down there these lings doing a bit of damage slowing things down slightly might get an scv there we go Great job by Kid here, making use of this very wide open choke in the natural of the Terran in this excellently placed bunker. I mean, it's very hard to get on that if you are going Ling all in, but it's also not that helpful for stopping Lings from running into your mineral line, right? If it was out a little bit further, if it was out here, it would really easily defend this but it would give, leave you a little bit vulnerable to Ling all in. So making the choice to keep the defensive bunker means he does end up losing a Marine and possibly a couple of SCVs, maybe just one. Didn't catch if any others went down there. And now Mutas are beginning to spawn. The build here from HBQ is going to lean heavily on Valkyrie. He has the engineering bay finishing up, but it's a little bit late, honestly. Will he have turrets up in time? Great snipe. Really great snipe on this first turret. I mean, the turrets are already a little bit late. You can see arriving here at 620. This is right when you should expect the Mutalus to arrive, but it feels like uh, things have been delayed just enough to where HBQ is a bit behind. There's the first Valkyrie coming out. Is he going to go for the kill on that? That's a little bit crazy. Will he get it? He does. He gets the first kill on the first Valkyrie. It is massive to get that kill. And he even kills the turret there as well. Two more turrets at the top of this mineral line. I don't think he will be willing to contest that. That's so much damage on already bruised, uh, uh, bruised mutalisks. But as long as he stays in this area, he can catch any SCVs that might be trying to make another bunker or another turret, excuse me, and just keep the SCVs at this part of the mineral line honest. Here we go, coming in, getting another SCV kill. He's already done enough damage to transition, but it looks like he wants more. Some Scourge are being made right now. They're being sent across the map right now. If he dives on this and kills the second Valkyrie, Kid's chances of winning this game skyrocket. They're already quite high with that first Valkyrie snipe, but if he gets the second, there's just so much money that's been invested into this tech. If it doesn't do the damage that it needs to, oh my gosh, and he just wipes it out. I think the kid is just going to hold position here, kill the turret, kill all the Marines, and he should be able to win this game. This is disastrous 
right now for HBQ. Disastrous damage for him. He's gonna lose another Valkyrie. Oh my God, Scourge are so dumb. They are so dumb. But the Valkyrie will go down anyway. Mutas are able to track that down. Only five Mutas remain, but it is enough to keep on killing Marines. And this Valkyrie is gonna take some time. As long as he gets more reinforcements over here, he should be able to continuously deny HBQ from securing the barracks area and thus prevent him from coming back in this game. More Scourge need to be sent forward. Lings are gonna run by into the main now. That might be the killing blow. As they start to pick off the Marines and start to go after the turrets, doesn't matter how many Valkyries you have here. It's gonna be one, it's gonna be two. As long as the Lings are picking off all of these turrets, then the Valkyries will have no safe place to run home to. And the Mutas and Scourge can just pick those off for free. Valkyrie's gonna hide over here while the Mutas do their work in the natural, picking off the turrets. One more turret just needs to go down and he will be victorious. So many SCVs have fallen and there it is. HBQ taps out and Kid is the winner. He manages to bring Team China to a victory here in the first round of week 80. All right, here we are in part two of the week 80 China versus Korea tournament. We've got HJS down here in the bottom left. His opponent is going to be AP over in the top right. So in the round two portion of this tournament, we have a all kill format, which means that uh, it's similar to King of the Hill, where if you manage to kill, or if you manage to get a win, then you get to stay and keep on going while the enemy team sends out more and more players to try and take you down. First team to four, once again, will be the winner. So HJS is representing the Korean squad and AP up here in the top right going to be representing China. China has a victory already on the board. So if they manage to win this series, then they will be taking home the prize, which I haven't mentioned yet. The prize here is going to be around 300 US dollars. And the runner up team, the losing team will take home $100. So even if they don't win, there is still a prize uh, for just showing up and playing, which is nice. Nice to get a little bit of income for your time here uh, at this tournament. Um, and, you know, it's not a huge prize or anything like that, but that's just the... Uh, that's just the world that we live in. That's the, the state of Brood War right now. We don't have huge prize pools anymore. There's a lot of little tournaments going around for players to compete in, uh, especially B-teamers. The, the prize pools are very small. So this is more of a hobby for most of these guys. You know, they're probably working a full-time or a part-time job uh, while practicing on the side uh, to try and fulfill their dreams. You gotta respect it. You gotta respect the hustle. Uh, I, I think there's a reason why a lot of uh, big names and strong players recently uh, have come out of streaming, right? Streamers uh, who have turned to pro Brood War players. There's quite a few of them. Uh, Larva is one example. I think Shuttle, another pro or a, another uh, streamer turned pro player or was he a pro player before that before he started streaming i'm not sure but he's definitely very very popular i think c as well um, may have uh, been a big streamer before he became a pro uh, but again i'm not totally sure on that uh, i think that's because they have so much time to actually spend grinding out this game they're streaming every single day. They have a really good chance of uh, becoming a pro player. Well, it's not a great chance, but I mean, you know, more than somebody who's working uh, 40 or 50 hours a week or in South Korea, I know the work culture is insane. So you might be working 60 hours a week and not getting paid overtime 
I know that's the case in Japan, and it's apparently even worse in South Korea. So just imagine you guys working at a full-time job in South Korea and then trying to become a pro Brood War player at the same time. That's a lot of stress. I mean, if your job's stressful at all, I doubt you'll be able to handle coming home and playing Brood War afterwards. It's kind of funny. It's like that meme. Um, I don't re quite remember the the full context of the full context of that, but it's like men coming home after a long and stressful day play an incredibly stressful video game to relax. And that's just a man thing, I guess. <laughs> Women do not understand that, but yeah, it is kind of relaxing sometimes to just like, if you have a really stressful job, play a stressful game, it really takes your, it's something that can actually take your mind off of what you were doing at work, right? Something that can actually, like, if you're just playing like a random game, it's nothing serious. You're just kind of relaxed. You might still be thinking about your job, but if you're playing Brood War at a high level and playing your heart out, you literally can't be thinking about anything else. So maybe that's the way that um, players, both men and women, can relieve some of their stress from work. Now, enough about that. We're getting into this game. Not a lot of action has occurred just yet. Everything has been pretty normal so far for bro both sides. Getting in here with the probe, though, is the first major event of this game. He's going to see the lair. He sees the spire. He knows exactly what's going on. Importantly, he saw no second gas as well, which is a huge indicator. It's like, okay, you're probably not going to be muting me. Um, I don't need a massive amount of defenses here in the main. In fact, he's not even building one cannon in the main base gonna be getting this first Corsair online when he can and continuing to produce these zealots he's actually hidden two gateways in the back here as well so this is going to be a massive zealot timing attack um, it's gonna come way faster than HJS would have predicted and that could be a really big problem for him Will he run by with these lings? No, he's going to chase these five zealots. And seeing these five zealots does not tell you a lot. Three mutas are on the way. Will he just go up to five? He's going to six. Six mutas actually counters this build beautifully. This is a hard counter to what our Protoss player is trying to do. He's waiting for that plus one. He's almost got speed done. But mutas are going to pop, and we've got sunkins at each base. Two or one sunken at each base. I don't know if that actually blocks. Might force the drones to take a funny path. Maybe he has that mapped out perfectly. But when I look at that, I think these drones are not going to mine properly. Let's see if it's actually working out okay. Yeah, it seems to be doing all right. Going off some zealots here on the map. Sixth hatchery going down. Well, I guess I don't I don't fully understand this matchup, I guess. I'm still struggling with Protoss versus Zerg. I would consider it one of my better matchups, but I really thought this was gonna do more damage. I really thought that this was gonna be harder to hold. Now he will get in here and try to break this, but he can't leave the base with his corsairs. He's only got three. And the Mutas will be able to fight these zealots pretty well. Here we go. Jumping on top of everything. There's a few links left. The zealots really having a hard time actually targeting down drones right now. He gets the sunken colony, but the zealots are falling really fast. Wow. Two zealots going to try to run by in the natural as well. They do get up here into the main. Building off a couple of extra drones. But this is still looking great for HJS. He's countered this very well. And all of the zealots will go down without too much trouble. Still 42 workers on the field. He's going to get into full on hydro production in just a moment. Maybe add on just a few more drones like 40. Oh, he's at 46. Okay. I was going to say 45 is like 
prime. It's perfect for six hatch hydra production. You can pump out so many hydras at that point. So it looks like you will begin that hydra's production. We've got one archon on the field and three corsairs. What can this do against now a huge amount of hydras popping out from all of these hatcheries? It's full on six hatchery uh, hydralist production at this point. Looks like he messed up the placement on the cyber core, forcing probes to go around the long way. That's going to limit his gas income quite a bit. AP making a pretty big mistake with the placement. Uh, the same mistake I actually thought that uh, HJS made over here is not going to be the case. HJS doing fine, especially with the sunken colony now killed. Coming in with the DT now. He will be able to push away the overlords, but another overlord arrives and that DT will get picked off. Corsairs are going to end up going down. Yeah, these Corsairs may get picked off as well. AP leaves the game. HJS going to take this one home. A nice build from him. Really controlling this game with his mutilist play. Taking the first win for Team Korea. Okay, Schwan Schwan gets sent out next to take on HJS. Spawning pool first. What is this? Nine pool? Oh boy. HJS gonna get really aggressive here. And we're setting up a wall at the front. Will it be done in time? And will the Marines pop out on the correct side? I believe that they will. If you place this correctly, you can place it just at the right pixel. The Marine will pop out on this side, and this is impassable terrain here. So hopefully this works out for Swan Swan. Otherwise, we're gonna see a really quick game. Like this game is gonna be over before you know it. Spotting pool is just about done. We'll see six slings being produced. HGS just going to pull the trigger on a really aggressive play. And it may pay off huge. Especially with Xuan Xuan scouting in the incorrect direction. Sometimes it's good to just check up here. See if the overlord's there. And if not, you can... Uh, rule out the possibility of it be of uh zerg being over in this p position gonna send out a second scv in the correct direction this time down towards the bottom left that will spot these links most likely we have that supply depot completing the wall and the marine it does pop out on the right side so that is fantastic for sean sean and with the scv spotting these links coming as well you can Pull some extra SCVs just to make sure that he's got enough to continuously heal this supply depot. And unfortunately, HJS is going to come up here. He sees the supplies and the Marines behind the wall. And I think his heart just sank. Unfortunate uh, result for HJS. He's not going to get any damage done here, but he will start a very fast layer. Gonna go ahead and grab that tech structure. Getting himself ready for what may be a very quick two hatch muta all in. Could potentially be something like a guardian play as well. Like that's a possibility. I'm trying to think of other possibilities of things we could go for. We can't really go for lurker here. We've cut so much economy. Lurker not gonna be totally viable. Two hatch muta, potential to go into guardian is what I'll say. Uh, if he tries to macro out of this, I think that Sean Sean's going to take a huge advantage and probably just crush him. He goes for the eBay immediately. Very quick eBay. So this will be a plus one build from Sean Sean. Going to double down on his economic lead in this game and just get these upgrades out as quick as possible. So that his mid, uh, mid late game is going to be super strong. Let's see if this pays off for him. Or if HJS can get in there and deal a little bit of damage before. Uh, Sean Sean really gets off the ground now. We have a drone moving out right now. It looks like he wants to take a third. I'm a little bit surprised to see it. 
but it's definitely necessary if you want to go for something like a guardian play you need that third gas online 100 percent if you just want to go straight to Hachimura, you really don't need that many drones. Like three drones on the minerals and three on the gas at the natural will be fine. He goes ahead and grabs that hatchery, low ground hatchery as well at the natural. Is he going to try and macro his way out of this? That could be really difficult. We'll have to see when a queen's nest gets added on or if it gets added on. In this game it'll tell you the timing of when we're going to see uh, a transition if we're gonna see guardians or not we've got the spire finishing will he start plus one armor that's what I'm looking for right now four more barracks on the way that is wild four barracks coming up oops one shot scans the natural doesn't really see too much Four barracks here with a fifth in the main. It's almost impossible to actually two hatch and kill a player who's gone for a build like this. It's so many Marines. It's almost foolhardy to try. We're cutting SCVs right now. Schwan Schwan gonna stick at 31. He's gonna make a huge amount of Marines. And start to put the pressure on HJS, who's just now popping out his first few mutas. They're making their way to the front. Plus one and range are about to finish up. He doesn't want to engage until that's done. But it will be done here really, really soon. Diving in, killing a single Marine. It's a drop in the bucket for Xuan Xuan, who has huge Marine production now coming. Plus one is just about done. Range is finished. Comes in, snipes another Marine. Trying to pick off SCVs. You can see cutting SCVs right now. Xuan Xuan is just focused on pure Marine production. His goal will be to pick off this base or go directly for the throat as soon as possible. Plus one armor starts. Full on Marine medic production coming out here. And it'll be up to HGS to identify this and take this army head on, try to fight it, or just try to transition. So far, he has not added on any tech buildings, which is telling me that he wants to just build mutas and lings and try to win this. And to need to try and kill this bio ball. Even if he kills the bio ball though, it's only gonna give him a brief respite. 30 SCVs. So many SCVs have been cut at this point. Shuan really does need to do some damage. He's coming out. He's building two more barracks, guys. He's going to go to seven racks. Are you kidding me? That is insane. Where's the factory? That is a wild play from our Chinese Terran player. Coming in, going to go ahead and snipe a bunch of these Marines that are coming out to reinforce. A really nice move there with those mutas. Going to rotate back around and get in front of these marines once again. Look for more opportunities to snipe stragglers. There's the Hydra Den. Finally, we're going to have our transition. Six marines on the way at the same time. We should have one medic started here pretty soon as well. That's so much production out of Xuan Xuan. Still 30 Marines. A factory finally does start. HGS looking for more pickoffs. He's doing a great job of slowing this down. What does he have back at home? Nothing. Nothing back at home. Xuan Xuan might just walk through this. This is starting to look scary. That is so many Marines. That is a ridiculous ridiculous amount of marines we've already got the hive on the way and the factory is not even complete so based on the tech you would think that hgs is ahead but he needs to hold on for a long time before he can uh, make this tech actually work for him and Xuan is not going to give him that time he's just going to pull the trigger on an attack right here into the front this is a wild play from Xuan Xuan, but it just might work Diving in here, killing off everything. Plus one armor is about to finish. 
makes him so much stronger and HJS leaves this game what a wild decision to cut SCVs and build two extra barracks you never get to see it but here we got a glimpse into a very different mindset in taking on Zerg in this matchup just ba just just gamble everything on this marine attack make sure that you have so many marines it doesn't even matter how good you control or how well you control your mutas i just have a million little marines to come in there and take you out really interesting play there from Shuan Shuan. he wins this game and evens out the score between china and korea prime comes out for the Terran squad. He's sending out a super early SCV and look what he's going to pull against Xuan Xuan. His Terran brethren is going to put a barracks in this man's natural. What a scumbag Terran player. This is definitely going to be some nasty dirty cheese. Let's see if Xuan Xuan can hold it off. He's building his supply depot right next to the command center gearing up for a normal casual game of Terran versus Terran and that's not what Prime has in mind he is just gonna go for it here Shuanshan not sending out the early SCV if he sent an early SCV and spotted this the game would just be over Prime would lose the barracks he wouldn't complete the barracks he would be definitely losing this game now a refinery starts still no scv scout just yet here for shuan shuan will he get nervous once he sees the scv moving out for prime he sends out his first scv to go check the front and finds immediately a marine to start to attack he fights that marine a little bit he's gonna pull six more scvs to uh, come out and surround these forces no pulls of scvs from prime thus far and the scv of prime just went down in the main mineral line of shuan shuan he's getting his first marine out if he builds a bunker on the ramp i don't think he can be broken but he's not going to go for it he's trying to cut the bunker and fight here majority with scvs until he has enough marines out uh, I don't know about this. This is getting a little scary. He's gonna have to pull a lot of SCVs. If he just built a bunker, I think he would have been fine. Build one bunker on the high ground. If he can just control the ramp long enough, you should be able to get it up. And then things become a lot easier. There we go. Get some good damage on one of those Marines. Forcing the rest back for a moment. Looks like he might be able to stop this. Okay. Doing pretty well. Here comes another SCV from Prime. Prime getting one SCV to the front here. Marines being juggled backwards beautifully by Xuan Xuan. Fantastic Marine juggling there. Pulling back those two injured Marines perfectly. Keeping them alive. Now he's going to start his uh, factory at the front. Both players kind of missing a supply depot. You can see both players stuck at 18 of 18. Too much going on right now for them to uh, totally... Uh, pay attention another nice pullback on this marine keeping that last one alive and it looks like Xuan Xuan completely holds this although prime still a reasonable amount of scvs and he's got his factor on the whale albeit a bit slower you can see prime is now even on that scv count but Xuan Xuan with a pretty heavy supply lead more marines and he's almost got his factory done. I would say Xuan Xuan's going to be feeling very good about this, but it's not over. Absolutely not over. He handled this pretty well. He does need to handle this follow-up, though. If he wants to take this game. Prime, a serious contender. Going to give him a run for his money, despite how badly that early game went. Wow, the SCV actually taking out that marine citizens arrest oh wait what one hp i thought he got an attack off there did he miss the range zero attack somebody clip that the hell was that 
SCV there getting luckier than any SCV you've ever seen in your life does find his end behind the mineral line uh, of prime but did a great job just checking out and confirming the uh, what's inside the base of prime now look at this prime being so sneaky he's even gonna proxy a starport after his proxy barracks didn't work just time to double down do another proxy and he goes for a machine shop dude he would have died had Schwan Schwan just gone across the map with his stuff instant death he had one vulture and if Schwan Schwan had three that is absolute destruction we would have won easily but instead gonna take a bit of a conservative approach has fallen a little ways behind in overall scv count should be able to catch that up if he continues to produce scvs but it feels like he's cutting here cutting scvs and yeah he is trying to get out as many units as possible right now with three factory play could absolutely overwhelm the one factory of prime especially without siege mode it's going to be incredibly hard for him to hold on Shuan Shuan getting his ionic thrusters Ion thrusters ready here as wraiths start to increment out for Prime. Dude, this could be a wacky, wacky game. Armory just starts here near the main mineral line. You know Prime's gonna find that immediately and start to harass this SCV. Make it really tough for Sean Sean to finish that uh, and get some Goliaths out to deal with this Wraith. Going after the low HP SCVs that were damaged from the earlier attack as well. Look at him. He's getting so many kills. He's already got three kills. That doesn't usually happen. <laughs> that doesn't usually happen with... Oh my god, he got the, the Marine as well. Picking the correct Marine there. And even getting some free hits on this other Marine. Are you kidding me? He's going to kill that as well. That is so painful. Two tanks and a Supply Depot wall. This is incredibly smart for Prime. He has a second Wraith coming in now and the... Oh no, the Armory! Wait a minute, the Armory! It's not being built. We're gonna go after the uh, SCVs and tanks at the front. The SCVs are actually making the tanks kind of bug out right now. Uh, he might be able to get that tank. He's actually killed quite a few SCVs, but he's losing way more. You can see Prime rocketing ahead he's oh getting by here into the natural mineral line he's killing a lot but yeah there's only 14 scvs left <laughs> and now finally he realizes the armory oh no this armory is never gonna finish okay did finish that is sad seven kills on this as well oh jeez, that is painful seven kill vulture at the natural i didn't even see that i don't think Shuan Shuan did either he's got 13 workers remaining his great position after holding that uh, very annoying uh, barracks, uh, proxy barracks, has been outright destroyed. His lead is gone. And in fact, he is in a severe deficit with Cloak about to finish. Well, that's going to be the final blow. He's going to turn around with these two rates, come into the main mirror line, Cloak, and we should see Shuan Shuan lead this game. That is, yeah, that is so painful. Wait, what are these wraiths doing? Just go kill them. Just go kill them. Look, we're making, uh, we're making nothing. We're making one SCV. That's all we can afford right now. Fly in. There's only one Goliath. There's two Goliaths, excuse me. And there's nothing to detect these. He's finally going to start his, uh, commsat. If Prime had flown in a little earlier and just done this immediately... Uh, there's no chance for Shuan Shuan, but as it stands, he will have to tap out. Shuan Shuan leaves this game, and Prime puts another one on the board for Team Korea. Okay, our next match, Prime spawning in the top center. Juan Hoon in the bottom right. He's going to be sent out to try and knock down Prime in this game, and if... I would expect any player in this lineup or I could hope for any player in this Chinese lineup to uh, dominate and 
you know, kill a whole bunch of Korean contenders, I would say uh, Juwon Hoon would be my pick. He is crazy good, as we've seen, uh, especially versus Terran, and I expect we should get a win here from Juwon Hoon with this series evening out, but I would be happy to be surprised. Prime had an interesting game showing some some creativity in that TVT recognizing that uh, his earlier or his initial proxy barracks play did quite a bit of damage to the SCVs although it didn't get many kills he recognized that probably he would be able to get in there with uh, Wraith play and pick off a lot of SCVs and he was completely right the uh, uh, Wraith play into the main was super smart and then the vulture into the natural was genius like that was all perfectly executed by prime and he completely eviscerated Schwan Schwan even after Schwan Schwan managed to hold the initial attack this very very good play by him now Schwan Hoon here opening with that gateway no scout no scout and what looks like no range as well. Uh, kind of an interesting play from him. He's going to go for, what's this, 20 Nexus. Uh, I don't know how this actually plays out. It's kind of an interesting decision from Jean Hoon to play like this. And usually what you'll see is like a first goon and then range will start and then we'll be like 22 23 nexus is pretty standard stuff but instead he's done things in a slightly different order and it looks like prime wants to punish he's gonna pull the boys all the way across the map marines vulture coming here as well without the range it's kind of tough to fight this the uh, Dragoons deal very little damage to the SCVs. It's like 10 damage per shot. So you can see they take six shots to kill an SCV. And they're going to do a great job of body blocking while the uh, Marines can deal the damage. Now coming forward here, tries to target down a Marine. Some probes are coming to the back line here. SCVs are doing a lot of damage to these Dragoons, but probes are falling kind of en masse right now. We're actually way ahead in the total... SCV count at this point and he cancels the Nexus. Oh boy. Juan Hoon is in a lot of trouble right now, guys. He is in a really painful spot. He's going to go after the Vulture and try to run by, but it looks like he might be able to snipe this. Get the SCV. Okay, he does get the SCV. This dragon with just 21 HP. He should be able to hold now, but he's lost so many workers. Like, you usually either try to come out with the fight with the workers and save the Nexus, or you just sack the Nexus and save the workers. But John Hoon didn't do either of those. He sacked the workers and sacked the Nexus as well. So, I mean, this is rough. He's losing even more probes in his main. He's got 11 workers at home. And one gateway, no tech. But he will throw a robotics bay over here at 12. So this is his hope. The last hope of Juan Hoon. He's going to pray that he can somehow get this robo up and uh, get a kill on Prime with just a couple of Reavers or one Reaver going into the main base. Gonna run forward here, try to pick off the tank. Unfortunate, he lost or he missed some shots and this Dragoon bugged. Oh, dude, Juan who just got so unlucky there. Oh, dude, that is so rough. This tank gonna escape with one hit left on it. And he lost both the Dragoons. Yeah, hate to see it, boys. That is a rough way to go down, but John Hoon is just about out of this one. Coming out to repair this tank, and you bet he'll come across the map to pressure after. Will we even be able to see a robotics support bay finish for 
Juan Hoon. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Oh, it's so painful. Well, all that Prime needs to do is push over here and actually kill this. Um kill this pylon and he just wins this game. That's as, it's as simple as that. He didn't kill the mine. Oh no. Well, he's just going to go for the throat. There's no nexus here. It, it was all for this one reaver. A one reaver is his hope. Uh, and it's just not going to work out, dude. Dronhun going down in a miserable fashion. He will be able to clear that mine, thankfully. Oh, but that one does connect. Chasing the dragoons back into the main base. One tank, one vulture, four marines, and two SCVs is the army that may just end Dronhun here. Yeah, that reaver is about to pop out. Looks like this will be clean. But this is a heartbreaker right here. Watch this. Can you pick it up in time? Here we go. It's going to be close. He does get it. Okay. Whew. That is crazy. Nine workers, boys. Nine workers is all that remains here for Juan Hoon. And it's probably going to get worse. Vultures are going around the outside. They've got speed. Running straight by this Dragoon. I think that's actually GG. Um... He's going to lose so many workers. And I don't think he can deal enough damage back at home. Uh, back in uh, Prime's home to make it worth it. He's going to go after the tank. He does get a good shot there. But the mine connections are real. The vultures kill all the probes. And GG is called Prime on a roll as he takes out Hoon And continues to dominate here for Korea. Okay, Kid coming out next. The Zerg player of the group. Really not a lot of Zergs today, but we're making do. Still having fun. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. It's been uh, very short. Every game has been pretty short so far. I could get used to this, guys. Just uh, really nice, easy to digest games. Very quick, to the point. Very fast drone coming out here for kid oh he almost lost that two hp jeez that was close prime almost getting the surround on that and killing it off right away it looks like he's going for some sort of teched out play one 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 style and kid is gonna get away with a 12 hatch no problemo did uh you know have to send this drone across the map to make sure it wasn't an eight racks or whatever but it's fine you're happy here as kid, knowing exactly what your opponent is up to. You can make sure that this overlord doesn't go down. You can start to send your uh, drones, you know, to mine. And all you need, you know, all you need is just one sunken colony here. So no need to build any lings or anything like that. Just pure drone production. And once you get rid of this SCV, then you can start to really tech out of this into something that's uh, gonna be strong against what prime is putting up prime doesn't have a factory yet oh there it is factory in the wall which i haven't seen before supply depot i guess makes this ling tight that's interesting i haven't seen this exact wall in before but it's kind of cool i'm digging it one marine heading out on the map uh one marine really doesn't do much and it's going to go ahead and look for the Overlord, I imagine. But even just two Lings to clear out the SAV will be enough to deal with this one Marine. And those Lings are going to be popping out here in just a moment. The slim chance that he literally built zero Lings. I guess it's worth it to send the Marine across. But in this case, it's just not really going to do him anything. He sees the one Ling. and he's, Okay, got to head home. One vulture will be made, and two starports are on the way. Starts burrow. I love it. Kid, you're making a fan out of me, my friend. Yeah, love to see the burrow immediately. Because you just know how strong it is against uh, these wraith plays. And you're imagining that's probably what he's going for. The... Rush distance from here to here is so short. You can place the... Because of the shape of this 
uh, main base. You can place the starport so far out. Kind of crazy. Hiding the overload over here, also a great play. Yeah, I'm really liking this from Kid. He is in a great spot. He will be, you know, waiting for a little while for the Spire to finish. And what kind of damage can Prime do? He'll probably kill a lot of Overlords, right? He might come in and try to deal some damage to the drones, but that's not going to be very fruitful with Burrow being done. I'm surprised we don't have a Hydroden. There it is. Hydroden started. Um, starts on the second gas. We have more... Okay, that factor is going to float out. So only one vulture is going to be made this game. Starting to burrow here. Going after the drones. This is looking good so far. Kid keeping everything alive. Not losing even a single drone at the present. Slowly putting all these underground. We'll go back to mining here once the wraiths have left the building. Overlord gonna be the target now five mutas on the way Honestly everything looking fantastic for kid even though he's gonna lose this overlord. It's absolutely fine Keep burying these drones. He's not gonna lose any of them. It's gonna be very hard for prime to win this game Eventually he'll have to go into uh, Cloak, but he hasn't done that just yet. He's still building wraiths Oh boy, I'm gonna go right after these mutas, but the mutas are now on top of this. Dude, he's gonna kill all the wraiths, I think. The yeah, wraiths are not great at fighting against this. He's gonna kill every single one. Oh, the control is pretty good for Prime. But yeah, this is every wraith dead. Is that just GG? It might be. Floating the factory into the main, is he gonna land to try to build vultures in here? That would be a very sick play. More... Uh, unburrows here as the drones get back to mining. Vulture at the front. Factory floating in. Is he going to land that? Doesn't seem like he will for now. Marine's moving to clear the Marine in the top left-hand corner. Could actually kill this Vulture, no problem, but is being cautious, hoping that he can uh, catch more wraiths coming in. We've still got three wraiths. He didn't build an add-on. That's crazy. It's really wild that Prime didn't go for Cloak and then he just stood there and fought against Kid's Mutas. It's um, pretty well known that Wraiths do not fare well against uh, large amounts of Mutas. And now that uh, Overlord's speed is done, Kid is going to come across and think about actually attacking. He builds a bunker here. That's hilarious. A bunker to protect the starports right now is kind of funny. The overlords are following this, but they're not even necessary. We don't have a add-on. I think he's realized that now. Just send these overlords back home. They're really not required. A vulture gets in. Well, it was just made inside the main, but Burrow is still a super useful tool. We just uh, go ahead and clear that out. Another vulture in the main is annoying. But it should be dealt with without too much trouble. Coming around once again with the Wraiths. Again, though, Burrow is just so good. He will kill this factory. And let's see if even one drone dies here. If Kid is quick, he could prevent any drones from dying. Looks like he's not quick enough. And so he loses three drones. Four drones, actually. Um, so with four drones going down, that's a bit rough. He might just be able to cut off these wraiths, though, and kill them all. Now, we could see Prime split the wraiths and send some into the natural of Kid. Do something like that. You know, he's going to just spread them out as he tries to run away, which is fine. He will save some of these, but most of them are going to go down. A lot of them are damaged, and Kid is on the war path, dude. He's had enough, I think. It's time to go across the map and kill this guy. He's only got, uh, he's got no upgrades. One attack is on the way. He sees that there's no natural. I think it's about time to fly in and just kill. He's got 11 meters here. He's got more coming. Coming in, going to fight against these turrets. That's quite a bit of DPS with the two turrets and all of these wraiths. Now coming, just going to ram it right down. Kill this bunker. 
and kill this missile turret and then he should be able to shut down the oh wow he kills every wraith yeah prime is gonna have to leave this game he taps out the <laughs> cloak was so late here kind of hilarious that he didn't have that cloak and he was waiting for it now when overlord speed is already done and overlords are you know on mass kind of a rough game here for prime but excellently done by kid i love the uh, response by him the early drone getting sent across the map uh, was beautiful as well he saw everything and that's the reason why he had the perfect responses he just had perfect information we're gonna jump into our next game kid is on the top of the king of the hill the king right now can he be dethroned by any of these korean players we're about to find out HBQ gonna be sent out here to try to finish off this series. It's match point for the Korean squad and KID Kid has or is this KLD? I'm just gonna keep calling him Kid because I've been doing it all um all cast. So you know, let's just double down. I'm just gonna call him Kid from now on. Um Kid has brought them back from the brink. We're about to be uh, uh, taken down, but if he can continue this streak, maybe he can bring back China in this uh, second round. He's gonna send another early drone across the map and he spots the SCV here building the first barracks. He even checked the center. The kid afraid that he's going to get cheesed in this final game he's almost got that scv only three more hits one can he get it two three oh the repair oh the repair he needs two more hits now oh my gosh that's so painful well that drone will not get the kill that it deserves but it did force some scvs off the line quite a few scvs were not uh working there so the investment of sending this drone out early does pay off big dividends here for kid and he has his build rolling very nicely behind this look at that 255 layer pretty darn quick layer here remember we were talking about the 303 layer this is the 255 layer which is going to give him a really quick meatless timing now he does not want to allow hbq to get in there and see that so he is pressuring away that SCV with the threat of a moving shot on this drone. And now that there's four lings out, HBQ will not be able to scout this. So he cannot figure out what the timing is here until he has a scan to check the main base of Kid. That could be big. HBQ gearing up for a plus one once again. Plus one has been the way that all these Korean players uh, have been dealing with HBQ, maybe, or with, with uh, Ki Kid, excuse me. Maybe that's his weakness. Maybe that's what they've discovered is uh, the weakness of Kid. He's not very good against plus one. I don't know. This is one of the first times, uh, maybe the first time I've ever cast a match with Kid. But uh, I've been pretty, uh, you know, happily surprised here by his play. I think he's been doing quite well. He did quite well to take down uh, his opponent last game uh, in Prime, shutting down the two port Wraith. Can he beat this quick plus one out of HBQ with his very fast meatless timing? See if he can get in there and deal any damage before HBQ is ready. A third base going to be placed over here at the top left, natural. A few lings are sitting off to the side, just waiting for a counterattack opportunity. Hiding the number of lings, a sign of a great Zerg player. Hiding his strength here. Making HBQ feel uh, okay to move out. Maybe try to pressure. When there is that counterattack threat ready. He starts a sunken and then cancels. Let's see. He scanned the main. So he sees the timing of the, the spire and he should be starting at turrets right now. 
A scan went down. He saw everything. How many turrets are we going to start? What? That's not a turret? We don't have any turrets. They are Mita's about to pop. It's a full round as well. So seven Mita's are on the way. There's the first turret. Ooh, HBQ is cutting it close. Right as the Mita's leave the main base, he starts the turrets. They should be just barely done in time. Look at how close this is. Mita's are arriving and the turrets are finishing. Very well done here by HBQ, and he got his four barracks play started. I think as soon as you fly in and see the four barracks play, my I am of the opinion that uh, switching into Lurker immediately is the right choice. Uh, doesn't seem like HB or like Kid kind of wants to go that route. He's instead going to build three sunken colonies and think about diving in. Um, HBQ doesn't need. He just scanned, I think. Yeah, he scanned the natural. So he doesn't need to push out. Uh, when this really messes up Terran players is when the Terran goes across the map. And then, you know, to, to put the pressure on Zerg and force them out of their mineral line. Wow, that's so many turrets in this mineral line. Dude, we really need a Hydra Den right now. Uh, where this actually messes the Terran players up is when they move out. And then there's three sunkins in the natural. And the Midas just dive in and just kill all the turrets and drive the Terran off of their main base. While defending at home with sunken colonies. That's where things get really hairy for the Terran, but I don't think that's going to be the case in this game. He's going to have to fly through a ton of turrets here or a ton of Marines. That's his choice right now. Neither of them are good choices and HBQ is going to punish him severely for this dive through. Back at home, still no transition. Two more Sunkins are coming out. Okay, two, just two Sunkins in the natural. That's neither enough to hold off all of these um, Marines. Well, neither. It's not enough to hold off all the Marines. So, I mean, this dive in play is not going to end up working, and the Hydra Sten does start. But can he, he actually fight these Marine Medic out on the field? They're going to start to push up towards top left. And that's going to force even more Sunkins out, I think. Good job harassing the back of this Marine Medic line. Was trying to hit the field. He's kept this lower than I thought he would be able to. Just constant Mutalist production. A few drones being added on here and there. Kid is doing a reasonable job. At holding the line as HBQ tries to move out. Eventually, he will overwhelm. Eventually, HBQ will have too much. A lot of scams going out. He spots the base in top left. Really important moment here for HBQ, knowing exactly where this is. When the time comes to actually assault that, he'll be able to send everything to that location immediately rather than looking around, scouting around, trying to figure out where that is. Kind of assault it directly. Some good trading here out of Kid. I'm, I'm honestly pretty impressed with the way that he's able to trade with these Mutas. And he hasn't, like, thrown Overlords all the way across the map either. Like, look at how close his Overlords are. Like, he's doing a really good job of juggling these Overlords. Which is one of the harder parts of uh, doing this Mutalist uh, harassment play. Sunken is going to be coming up over at the top left. He has some lings. He's got some mutas. Uh, but this marine medic is going to just come running in. Uh, he's got to pull the trigger with these mutas immediately. Come running up here and try to kill this off. Four lurkers start. He's got to buy a little bit more time. Dives in. Get some kills. Not bad. He just needs a tiny bit more time. Eight lurkers on the way right now. This is the most tense part of... Zerg versus Terran for the Zerg player. It's so difficult to get all this going. He has to make the Defiler mount at the same time. You're under so much pressure right now. The Marine Medic right outside of your base. Oh, here we go. He's just going to run in there? Are you kidding me? That's so many Lurkers. Hits the scan. Kills two of the Lurkers, but the rest of the Lurkers here are going to absolutely clear house. 
Still two remaining, and another sunken colony is going to be started. So I think that kid holds. He did lose quite a few of his mutas, though. But so much bio ended up going down. I really believe that this is kid favored now. 47 workers were made during all this. So not the same play as what we saw out of uh, Prime earlier. Or was that Prime? Hold up. I'm getting all the games mixed up now. It's been a lot of games today, guys. Who was AP up against earlier? Or sorry, who was... um. Uh, it was Schwan Schwan. Schwan Schwan went up against um, HJS earlier. And ended up taking him out with a really aggressive marine play by cutting SCVs. That's correct. There we go. Both those lurkers are going to die. Another sunken colony starts. There's only one lurker here. This is a moment where HBQ could break through. I don't see a... Nidus just yet. Where is that Nidus? There it is. It's just finished. But he hasn't connected it. There we go. He will get that connected. Um, This is not the same sort of play that we saw out of Schwan Schwan. Wow, that's so many sunken colonies. He's really desperate. Worried about getting broken right here. And he, sh he absolutely should be. That's so many vessels. And the Nidus is just not quite connected yet. He finishes all the sunkens. He will be okay, but he wasted a lot of drones on this uh, defense. So it's a little rough right now for Kid. I keep trying to say it, but this is not like Schwan Schwan's play. He did not cut SCVs. He did not add on a lot more barracks. He's instead gone for double expansion behind this. Plague, Burrows on the way. I love, dude, Kid is winning me over right now. Absolutely winning me over. Who gets Burrow right now when you're getting all these upgrades? Kid, that's who. He knows that a uh, Vessel and Irradiate, like, uh, plays like uh, Eraser could absolutely ruin his day. So he gets this preemptively. Now, of course, these Marines heading up into the top left are annoying. But eventually we will get uh, Defilers out. Another sunken colony maybe coming up over here. That's kind of crazy. Some scourge. Looking for opportunities to maybe snipe a... Oh my god, that is that is painful. <laughs> what happened there? I thought he was just going to dive and kill one of the uh, dropships. Oh, he's coming in with the eraser. Here it is. Where's the burrow? There it is. Beautifully done. That's exactly what I'm talking about. We talk about this all the time in in the games that we watch about how important it is to get Burrow um, to just shut down Eraser plays, but hardly anyone ever does it. Having to irradiate. Oh God, he's gonna try it again? Dude, you just Burrow. What are you doing? Oh my God, he actually killed some of these drones. Well, that is crazy. That is crazy to lose drones when you have Burrow. Uh, kind of embarrassing right there, actually, for Kid. I think HBQ going to win this now, man. He is getting way too far ahead. The Scourge just not there in time. Can he come out and kill this? No, he cannot. Battle Cruisers are on the way. Dark Swarm comes out. He will push this back, at least. He's going to go ahead and snag this base uh, as his fourth instead of trying to come up here and take that, which is uh, a little bit unorthodox, but okay. Trying to come out and plague this marine medic group. And he will get that beautiful plague. Juicy plague. Ooh, damn. That is a nasty, dirty plague that we just saw. Scourge are probably going to go down here. Oh, my God. That was a disgusting irradiate as well. Holy. Painful. Painful irradiate. Killing all those Scourge. More drones are going to come through to saturate the space. Upgrades are on the way. We're about to hit 1-1. But uh, HBQ just has so much. He's plus 2 already. And plus 3 is about to finish. He's like halfway done. At least uh, Medic and Marine are going to get wiped out pretty quickly. But there's the Battlecruisers coming across. And with the Battlecruisers, it's more of a numbers game, right? You're going to need a lot of Scourge to deal with them. And you just don't quite have the gas here on three three base dark swarm over at the third will be 
uh, a bit annoying, but with this number of vessels, you can clear out everything pretty easily. We're gonna get a couple of hits on these two battle cruisers, and with the three spores, I think he will be okay. Just barely gonna be able to hang on. A fourth gas will come up here shortly. I'm gonna get that online in just a moment. It is only 3,000 gas though, which is a bit of a pain. See some of these others. Oh, this one's 3,000. Which one? How much is this? I actually want to find that out. That's 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 5,000, right? I thought it was 5,000. Ooh, big plague here. Getting all the vessels. That actually could be a game changer. Let me take a look at the map. Oh, that's 5k. Okay. Just wanted to confirm that. There's a 5k gas over there at the main base. So this won't last for as long, but it'll be a good uh, addition here while he's trying to uh, get more gases online. Plus two attack Marines are so deadly. We don't have any uh, mutas anymore to start to kill these vessels. Four of them over in the middle of the map and they are such easy pickings. Oh, there's the two mutas. Oh no, he needs to send the mutas over. Go kill these vessels, they're free. Ah, that's such a shame. Not gonna be able to do that. Dropping some more plagues on this stuff. Some uh, lings and lurkers making their way over here. He just needs a dark swarm and then the lurkers can do their work. What, that died? Hello? Am I crazy? How did that happen? It was definitely under the dark swarm. Uh, fourth base is under threat. Kid is starting to fall apart here. Uh, Yamato just went down, I think, and killed that uh, defiler under the dark swarm. And as this fourth base gets cleared up, I think we're gonna see Kid tap out. This is a little bit too strong, this play from HBQ. He did not do anything super sneaky in this game. He didn't uh, rely on you know, big attacks or anything or like a, a timing attack. He just got a huge macro game going and he's played it out beautifully. Coming in now with the BCs. This is a 12 kill BC here, eight and five. Starting to bash on the front of this base. He does lose the base in the top right, but this is not a critical base. He's already got four. Uh, he really doesn't need much more than that, at least for the time being. Drop over here at the back of the third as well. Super annoying. This drone is actually getting in, in the way. The Ultra can't really get in there to deal its damage. There we go. He finally gets on top of it and picks it off. A lot of Hydras coming out now. He's in desperation mode. Um, with just building Hydras and Defilers at the moment. Another drop coming in here to the main base. Everything is just about over. 100 supply advantage for HBQ. He's pushing in everywhere. The battle cruisers are just raining down hell on the Zerg base. He's even got what, plus one? And he's getting plus two? Dude, HBQ is out of control, man. Kid just cannot stand up to this. This is like me getting bashed by an S ranker. It's painful and painfully obvious that HBQ has a massive advantage when it comes to overall macro games. He pulls this Zerg player apart and it takes the round for his team. Excellently done, HBQ. We're gonna jump into our final game of the night, guys, the final ace match between Team China and Team Korea. Who will take home the grand prize here for this week of the CKW. Let's go find out. Well, I have no idea how this happened, but we're gonna have an ace match between Kid and HBQ, a rematch here for our final match of the night. Uh, whether that this was chosen randomly or by the two teams, I'm not really sure, but here we are. Cross map position. HBQ gonna start out with another wall in and kid. How will he play this one out? An early pool is gonna be the answer. Gonna try to put on some pressure. 
to HBQ early, and I, I just don't think it's going to work out in his favor. Cross map. And we have a wall in. It's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, the luck right now for Kid. Uh, falling a little bit flat. Unable to find the advantages that he needs to try and take down this monstrous Terran player. You can just see how macrocentric HBQ was in that last game. How much army he had. The battle cruiser number, uh, all the vessels that he was able to produce, the marine count was insane. Uh, his upgrades were so far ahead, it was a little bit wild uh, to see that competition, but this game could be even worse. Uh, because Kid opened with the uh, pool first, and it's unlikely to deal any damage at all. We might be seeing a very quick loss here for Kid. He started an even faster layer this time. 2.55 on the timer when that layer started. So he's going to have a really quick, once again, Spire to try and deal some damage. But how will his mid game hold up if he doesn't get like a lot of kills? It, it might just fall apart to HBQ once again. Um... I think one of the big problems maybe we recognize in that last game was uh, Kid having to add on so many sunken colonies uh, to try and save his third base when uh, just having the Nidus up a little bit quicker, you know, having like two, three sunken colonies would have been fine. Maybe building a few more Hydras out of that base, making sure that he had a good number of Lurkers enough to where when HBQ arrived with his first two vessels and radiated both of the vessels behind the sunken line, he wasn't just in panic mode immediately. Like if you've got uh, five lurkers, then if you lose two, at least you still have three. And with a couple of sunken colonies, you're gonna be okay. One thing that players are doing as well is building their sunken colonies, not in one long line and then putting the lurkers behind, but putting sunken, and then sunken with lurkers in between and then an overlord over top which really makes it tough for the Terran player to break through and we didn't see any of that from kid in the last game just kind of identifying some of those weaknesses uh that our Terran player might be looking to exploit again in this game a base maybe going down here at the center right that's interesting okay we could be seeing a Hydralis Defiler game, possibly even a Guardian all-in from Kid, depending on the way this early game goes. I'm gonna find out uh, as soon as the Spire finishes what upgrade he starts is gonna give us a great clue as to the plan coming forward here for Kid. And no surprise that HBQ, I can't really see this, but there, I don't know how to remove that, I forget. But there is a uh, eBay with upgrades coming. So you know, let me see here. What is this? Uh, the map. Map. Where's the map? There it is. What is this? Q. Ah, okay. Q. So the upgrade is behind the map there. No surprise that he's going for this uh, type of game. It's worked very well for him thus far. He's going to start to move out against these links. After the scans come down, he confirms that there are quite a few drones at each base. He knows that it's not like mass mass ling that's just waiting to pounce on him as soon as he opens this wall. So he's going to move out slightly, but he's not planning on it doing a big attack just yet. He's really focused on uh, securing his bases with turrets and fending off this fast mutalisk attack, right? We're coming in with... Uh, three, four, five mutas. Right about the six, ten mark. So this is a bit of a scary timing. It's super fast, but HBQ is all over it. He's handled this really, really well. And it's unlikely that we'll see too much damage come here for Kid because there's just so many Marines. Just so, so many Marines. Plus one air attack starts. I think we're going to see Hydralis Defiler this game. 
Although HBQ might be able to finagle a win before that happens. So far, Kid has done a great job of managing his Mutalis in that last game and in this game as well. Oh, this is going to be bad though. Oh, that was rough. Very nice move from HBQ. Slight lapse from Kid resulting in almost two kills on his Mutalis. He almost lost the second one there. Forcing out the stim, just backing away once again. More Mutas coming to the front. Some overlords kind of trailing across the map, but he's done a great job so far of keeping those back at home. There's the transition. Hydralisk Den and Queen's Nest on the way. We've got some scans going out. I think that... Oh, he just scanned the center right. He knows where the base is. Very important scan there for HBQ. Figuring that out. 11 Mutas in the stack. And a plus one about to finish. It's almost time for these mutas to start going ham. Start really diving in and, and polishing off some of these uh, marines. Going ahead and sniping at the back. Mm, bit of a deep dive there from Kid. Hasn't lost any mutas though recently. Oh, not getting the greatest trades at the moment. But has some more mutas to mix into the stack. We'll be sending one home with low HP. As he transfers drones over here and starts his Hydralis production. Lurker upgrade just finished. So where are the lurkers? Or did he even make lurkers? Uh, or am I missing something? Diving in. Ooh, that was a big deep dive from Kid. Not getting any kills on these Marines though. And it feels like HBQ is getting the better of these trades. The Hive is on the way. But where's Lurker upgrade? Or where are the Lurkers? No, he just started it! <gasps> oh no! Oh no, oh no. Is this one of my games? This is, uh, uh oh. This is, this is really scary right now. Yeah, this, this type of thing happens to me quite a bit. Uh, where you think you've got the upgrade and you just don't have it. Can be a very quick loss. He's building just pure Mutalis and Ling right now. Hoping that maybe he can surround and kill this force. But we're about to finish plus one armor. And that's when the, this, this timing is the strongest. When plus one armor is done. And plus one attack is there as well. Just diving into the natural. He's going to bring the Mutas around. The Mutas are kind of far away for this. He needs to bring them all in at once and take this fight. Here we go. Diving in now. Lings pop out. Our Lings are here just in the nick of time. He will dive on top of this and maybe finish it all off. Oh, it's so close. Four Mutas remain. That's not enough to one shot anymore. And yeah, Kid is going to have to tap out. He loses every Mutalisk. And all the drones of the natural are going to fall. Kid taps out. HBQ takes this game home and the series as well. Winning for his team an extra $200 cash prize for this week. Making their time very worthwhile. Excellent to see this series uh, between China and Korea. I'm really looking forward to doing more of these. So make sure to hit the subscribe button, guys. So you don't miss any future uploads. And of course, if you want to see Brood War Live Forever, hit that like button as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been an absolute blast and I'll see you in the next one.